appointment or reappointment of members to the Board of Public Trust, appointment of directors, reinvestment zone number eight. Confirmation of the appointment of members to the office. Office of Business Opportunity Advisory Board. Board for adoption of the legislative principles. Of dues to the Texas Municipal League. And uh, six is an ordinance appropriating 418,000 out of the water and sewer system consolidated construction permit as an additional appropriation to agreement between the city and PLW Waterworks LLC, formerly known as Pepper Lawson Construction LP for change order five on the East Water Purification Plant Rehabilitation Seven is approval of that change order. Six, uh, under the contracting, under purchasing, and tabulation of bids. Eleven is an award to Metro Fire Apparatus Specialist Incorporated, Sidden's Market, Emergency Group LLC, and Chastang Enterprises. For firefighting aircraft rescue and firefighting mechanical truck and response command vehicles. 12 is to amend motion 2018 433 to increase the spending authority on award to John uh, to Deere and Company. 13 is a uh, payment to Blackman Mooring of Houston. 14 is to amend motion 2010 and 11, 11 to increase the spending authority on award to Altavia Chemicals LLC. 15 is an award to Totter LLC. 16 is an award to several companies for refuse and recycling trucks. And under resolution 17, is a resolution supporting the nomination of council member Amanda Edwards to the National League of Cities Board of Directors. 18 is an ordinance. Oh, it was pulled and will not be considered. 19. <clears throat> is an ordinance amending City of Houston ordinance numbers 2008-385 as amended and 2014-337 is amended, which authorized submission of 2008, 2010, and 2014 consolidated plan annual action plans to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, including applications and budgets for the Community Development Block Grant Program and declaring an emergency 20, ordinance appropriating $1,100,000 out of the homeless, and housing consolidated fund approving and authorizing agreement between the city and Houston Area Community Development Corporation to provide the appropriated funds in $7,400,000 of federal home funds to assist with the site acquisition development and construction of a single room occupancy facility to be located in the vicinity of 7025 Regency Square Boulevard in Houston, Texas that will provide affordable housing to low and very low income households and declaring an emergency. 21 is an ordinance approving and authorizing loan agreement between the city and DWR Somerset GP LLC to provide $6 million performance-based loan in federal community development block grant disaster recovery 
program rental housing project round two funds to assist with site acquisition and eligible soft cost for 120 unit affordable housing community located in the vicinity of 8506 Homestead Road in Houston, Texas, and declaring an emergency. <clears throat> 22 is an ordinance appropriating $18,826,014 of airport improvement funds in approving and authorizing design bill contract between the city and the t and Texas Sterling Banica, it's B-A-N-I-C-K-I-J-V-L-L-C for space port development infrastructure at Ellington Airport Project 779, making findings and declaring an emergency. 23, relating to the fiscal affairs of the Uptown Redevelopment Authority on behalf of reinvestment zone number 16, Uptown Zone approving fiscal year 2019 operating budget for the authority and fiscal years 2019, 2023 capital improvement budgets for the zone and declaring an emergency. 24, ordinance relating to the fiscal affairs of the Upper Kirby Redevelopment Authority on behalf of reinvestment zone number 19 Upper Kirby Zone approving fiscal year 2019 operating budget for the authority in the fiscal years 2019-2023 capital improvement plan budget for the zone and declaring an emergency. 25, ordinance approving issuance of $15,350,000 of bonds for the Generation Park Management District <coughs> for certain projects, approving plan specifications for such projects, and declaring an emergency. 26, ordinance establishing the north and south sides of the 2100 block of Dryden Road within the city as special minimum lot size pursuant to Chapter 42, the Code of Ordinances, and declaring an emergency. 27, ordinance establishing the north side of the 2000, 2100 block and 2100 block of MacArthur Street as a special minimum lot size pursuant to Chapter 42, Code of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. 28, ordinance establishing the south sides of the 4400 block of McKinney Street within the city as a special minimum lot size block pursuant to Chapter 42 of the Code of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. 29, ordinance establishing the east and west sides of the 100 block of North Eastwood Street as a special minimum lot size block pursuant to Chapter 42 of the Code of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. 30, ordinance establishing the north and south sides of the 2200 block Shakespeare Street as a special minimum lot size block pursuant to Chapter 42, the Code of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. 31, ordinance establishing the north and south sides of the 1900 block of Swift Boulevard as a special minimum lot size block pursuant to Chapter 42 of the Code of Ordinances and declaring an emergency. 32, ordinance consenting to the addition of 0 0.555 acre of land to Charterwood Municipal Utility District for inclusion in its district and declaring an emergency. 33, ordinance consenting to the addition of 1.2330 acres of land to Harris County <coughs> Municipal Utility District number 358 for inclusion in its district and declaring an emergency. 34, ordinance consenting to the addition of one point 125 acres of land to Harris County Water Control and Improvement District number 84 for inclusion in its district and declaring an emergency. 35, excuse me, is an ordinance consenting to the addition of 4.133 acres of land to North Hampton Municipal Utility District for inclusion in its district. 36 is an ordinance appropriating $344,913 
75 cents out of the water and sewer system construction fund and approving the expenditure of said sum to the, as the sixth supplemental appropriation to professional engineering services contract between the city and Corello Engineers Incorporated Project Advisor Technical Consultants for the Northeast Water Purification Plant Expansion Project and making findings and declaring an emergency. 37, Ordinance Awarding Contract to Guava LLC for FY 2019 Open Drainage System Maintenance Work Orders, making findings and declaring an emergency. That completes the consent agenda under matters held. 38 is an ordinance consenting to the addition of 489.21 acres of land to Harris County Municipal Utility District Number 449 for inclusion in its district and declaring an emergency. That completes the reading of the agenda for the City Council session of October the 17th. Stay tuned for a session of the Houston City Council scheduled again at 9 a.m. And remember to always drive safely, drive friendly, and have a great day.
um, a few a few um, um, you want announcements before we before we go forward with the agenda uh, let me start off on just a very a very positive positive uh, and, and note and recognition to the Hall of Fame of Texas City High School uh, council member uh, Jack Christie uh, he's being honored and uh, I got a picture in my phone when he was in high school that I'm gonna send out to everybody because I because I know he would want that to be distributed. So they were etching things in stone then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and sending it out. But I'm as a as a as a Hall of Famer from Texas City High School. So Councilmember Jack Christie, congratulations on your on your recognition and. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, I saw James Harden uh, uh, at the at the baseball game and uh, at the ballpark last night, and I'm expired. James Harden and Jose Ho, Jose Altuve will be the grand marshals for this year's HEB uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade, um, underwritten by HEB. This will be the 69th parade. So James Harden and Jose um, Altuve will be the grand marshals. So that should be great. Uh, this is a double serving of sports MVPs, an attraction that may not have been put off uh, in any other city. So congratulations to them. Um, I will say that after Hurricane Harvey, uh, there has been a lot of um, construction or applications for construction because people are rebuilding or they're building again. In addition to uh, businesses that are coming into the city and all of that that's taking place, um, and it has um, put an additional strain on the permitting office. And I've sat and talked with uh, my permitting team and public works with Carol, because uh, city is growing, but after Harvey, things have really ramped up, and we are going to have to ramp up significantly so that the time limit, we don't get behind, further behind. And so public works director Carol Haddock is making changes uh, at the permitting center to address um, any backlogs. Public Works will assign more staff to address the increasing complexity of some permits because the Public Works will bring in additional temporary contract staff to reduce the backlog. Um, Public Works will separate the customer lines according to the level of complexity of the projects to speed things up. And we will encourage the use of an electronic application process rather than just using the own paper option, and that should help out uh, as well. Um, I prefer growing pains over standing still, and we are listening to our customers who help Houston grow as it continues to be a place uh, which people where people come from near and far to live, work, and play. But in the aftermath of Harvey, with people seeking applications, construction, repair application permits, and then in addition to businesses that are in the area that are expanding or coming to the area, uh, we simply have to ramp up even more. So placing a high priority on the permitting office, and so we're going to do that. So essentially, um, we're going to be, um, um, uh, we'll increase the staff to do that. Um, you know, we'll bring in temporary contract staff to reduce the backlogs. We'll separate the customer lines according to the level of complexity of the projects, and we will encourage the use of an electronic application process rather than just using the on-paper options. Any other ideas? Please let us let us know. Um, but that's going to be that's 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 very very important. How late that? Uh, please bear in mind that we are collecting items for for, for Florida. Uh, Jan and giving leadership to that. They have already started. You can get information online but we are collecting items for, for the people in Florida, so please bear that in mind. We have our town hall meeting tonight. Uh, it will be Council Member Martha Castec Tatum. This will be town hall meeting number 11, the Fountain of Praise Church. Fountain Life Center, the Fountain Life Center with uh, Council Member Martha Castec Tatum. And then the 12th town hall meeting uh, which will be the final one in terms of going through to the districts in a formal sense, will be tomorrow night in Council Member uh, Greg Travis District, Council Member uh, District G, and that will be at Walnut Bend Recreation Center at 6.30. 6.30, that's tomorrow night on Thursday. That will be town hall meeting number 12. 
And then last night we were in Clear Lake uh, with Council Member Martin uh, at his town hall meeting last night. And thank you uh, for hosting us and for the discussion that took place last night. So that was very, very, very fruitful. Um, and then I want to uh, see Michelle. I want to I want to end on this note in my mayor's report. Um, you know, we have some outstanding people that, that work for the uh, for the city, and people are exceptional. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask um, Mina Patel Davis to come up. So Mina, why don't you why don't you come up? Because uh, just last week, um, Mina, she's got she's got some bling on. She's got her bling on, you know. <laughs> and uh, but Mina Patel Davis was invited to the White House. On, on the last week, where she received the Presidential Award for Extraordinary Effort to Combat Trafficking Persons. And that's exceptional, you know. Um, you know, there are you know, 50, 51 jurisdictions states in, in, within the United States, and uh, um, for, the, for the White House uh, to uh, single out and recognize uh, Mina Patel Davis speaks speaks to your work and the work of your team mm -hmm. um, because I know it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'm gonna ask the team members to come. I think we're missing one person, missing two. two missing two, but uh, for the White House to uh, to single uh, you all out and uh, and Mina as the leader of this team on human trafficking. Number one. Um, you all have done an outstanding job. That's number one. And, um, and before the White House recognized you, you know, you've gone and spoken several times before the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and they have invited you back. In fact, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, you were in Columbia, South Carolina, at the executive leadership team of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, presenting along with uh, Chief Acevedo on human trafficking to that group. Um, I mean, in terms of um, the, um, what I'm saying, the, the program that you all have put forth, the strategies, they've been looked at by people not only in the United States, but globally. I know you've gone to Turkey to speak on behalf of human trafficking. You've gone to India to speak on behalf of human trafficking. And we've had leading advocates coming from, that have come from India here to the United States, because I've had a chance to sit down and meet with, with her. Um, and for them, for the president, and the White House to, to recognize your efforts uh, just speaks volumes. The programs that Mina and her staff have developed are serving as models, and uh, as other cities join the efforts along the trail, our city has blazed. We have been known as a human tra uh, trafficking center in the United States, but now we are being also known as a center that is addressing human trafficking, and we are saying no more. Um, um, Mina works closely with law enforcement, but the essence of her work is to attack the problems of forced labor and sexual slavery in other creative ways, provide help for the people who are trafficked, and recognize they're usually not the criminals, train city inspectors and others working throughout the city to recognize the signs of human trafficking and how to report it, intervene in ways that complement the criminal justice system, not duplicate it. And so I wanted um, to bring you up um, before the members of city council and to acknowledge the work of your team uh, and to just to say you, you know may not have a large team but you can certainly do extraordinary work that's recognized by people all over the world and that is uh, only confirmed by the award that you received on last week uh, from the White House the presidential award for extraordinary effort to come back come back traffic in person Congratulations to you, and so well deserved. Okay. Oh, not so fast. Not so, uh, Council, Council Member Robinson. Mayor, I, I, I'd like to congratulate these individuals, Mina. Uh, it looks great. That's a, it's a great uh, honor for you, and I think it focuses a lot of attention on, on the important issue that you've been working uh, for this city and as we are really at the crossroads of so much of the trafficking in North America 
you've distinguished us as a city not so much for what we're suffering but what we're dealing with thank you mayor um Menel, i just want to also echo the sentiments of my colleagues and the mayor in terms of just really applauding you for your efforts not only are you being a leader here in terms of what has happened and what is happening with human trafficking but you're a leader all over the nation um, by creating those templates that others could use i think that just really speaks to uh, the notion that this is a collective effort and your leadership in that regard without being prompted your leadership in sharing that information has been truly impactful. So I just want to thank you uh, as well as applaud all of the efforts of your team. And, and I know you guys are a small office and you do a lot and you have a <laughs> profound impact on the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Melaster. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of the members of the team and certainly to you, Manal. I want to thank you for what you're doing on helping us lead a charge in Southwest Houston, particularly the Bissonette Corridor and other areas. You know, unfortunately, this battle is a battle of inches sometimes. We're not winning by miles, but we keep on pushing for the inches, and for a long, we'll have a foot and a yard and, and then a mile. So keep on doing the great work, and it must be a singular lifetime privilege to be able to receive an award at the White House, and thank you for so much for the work that you've done to earn it. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Mastardi. Thank you. I'm so proud. I am so proud of y'all. I can't tell you how proud I am. Mayor, the very first conversation you and I had when you, yeah. when you took office and you asked me what I wanted, and this is, this is what I wanted was for her to stay and to continue to the good work that she had started. And um, she created a foundation, and I'm sure with much support from you and, and your team, she's, able to, she's been able to elevate that. And it, it's, it's critical. What the work you do is critical to the success of of all humankind. It's it's um, it's the right thing to do, and um, and Mayor Pro Tem, uh, we had that viewing of that movie that impacted our probably our worlds forever about what these women and and men and fellow human beings go through. And no one should have to suffer at the hands of evil. It's just plain evil. So the work that you've done to be recognized for it makes us so proud, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman, Mrs. Nowers. Well, congratulations. Um, I wanted to just point out that, you know, as, as Houston is, is – I'm known as a city of innovation and innovators. That is what you were doing. You know, with, with very little that you pulled together, you created so much. And, and it's really your resourcefulness and your, your creativity and, and, um, and uh, just in your, your, your intelligence. You know, it's all come together to, to create this, um, this really excellent product that, you, that you are, you, you've created. And I just wanted to, to also say c congratulations to you and your whole team. Thank you. Councilman Ramison. Oh, sorry. He already spoke. That was my fault. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Councilman Mayor Pro Tem Cohen. Thank you. Congratulations, of course. And I was sitting here thinking that <clears throat> human trafficking is not something that suddenly came to the forefront. Um, it's not something that in the last couple of years we're saying, oh my gosh, we've got a problem with human trafficking. We've known for decades that we've had a problem with human trafficking, but we haven't been able to do anything about it until you came on board. And in my opinion, you have done more than, if I'm aware of any other city, to really bring this to the forefront, mm -hmm. that um, we are really, really working to make a difference. And <laughs> were it not for you and your team, I, I don't think we would have moved anywhere. And so, um, you know, having been involved in this field for, for quite some time, um, I can only tell you that you and your team are spectacular, and we are so lucky to have you in Houston. Thank you. And look, I, I know uh, Chris Grace is standing here, and, and uh, Dina Gayro is standing here, and, and they are outstanding uh, members of your staff. Uh, quite frankly, they, they, they work on some other things as well. So, <laughs> so have their multitasking. Uh, but I certainly want to acknowledge uh, Chris and Dana, you know, for 
for their tremendous efforts, tremendous work, um, because it does take an, a, a team to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And then I know you said that there are two others not here. So, uh, you know, you want to say a few words and, and, and then acknowledge also the other two individuals who are not here. With sure. The, uh, the team members that aren't get here by, today. Get right behind the microphone. Okay. The team members that aren't here today are Emily Freeborn and Shannon Martin. They're at a conference. Um, I just want to thank you. It's been a privilege to serve you, Mayor Turner, and I want to thank Chief Hunter as well for all the doors you've opened for this role to have the impact that it has. Uh, we're so thrilled to receive this honor on behalf of Houstonians, all of you, City Council, of course, um, the survivors, the victims, and there's still a lot of work left to do. A lot of people, our programs haven't reached yet. So like many of you said, we'll continue to do that work. Thank you. Well, congratulations again, and um, well deserved. And I know that there's a lot of work to do, but uh, we have the, the perfect team uh, to tackle that and keep us out in the forefront and to change the perception of Houston as being a hub of human trafficking, to be a hub of uh, preventative, taking preventative strategic steps uh, to eliminate human trafficking. So thank you all so very, very much. Well deserved. Thank you. And then lastly, I want to, I want to just a reminder, put in your calendar, the Veterans, the veterans um, Parade, November, <laughs> November, the, November the 11th. It will be on a Sunday, uh, but November the 11th uh, will be the Veterans Parade. So please, please put that on your, on your calendar and encourage, uh, start encouraging people uh, to be prepared to attend. Um, before I turn to uh, Councilman Robson again, for those who were not here, um, because this is a special day of recognition, you know, please you know, remember to acknowledge uh, Councilmember Christie for being a Hall of Famer uh, from Texas, uh, Texas City High School. Uh, he received that distinction, so I certainly want to want to note that, and I'm going to send him up to White House so he can so he can get his medal as well. Uh, <laughs> Councilmember Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to just touch on the first item you brought up this morning in your mayor's report about the uh, increased number of days that it's taking at the permit center and what we're doing to respond because it's really gotten frankly quite critical with between chapter 19 some of the recovery efforts with uh, Hurricane Harvey I will tell you as a practitioner in the area that my permit uh, response time has doubled mayor it's gone from a target of 15 days to 30 days for my clients on the private side and uh, we really just simply have to do something. There's, I know you've been presented a number of options. I, I applaud the way that you're responding to it. And I would tell my colleagues it, it's complicated what's going on. Not only, as the mayor alluded to, are things harder to review and inspect, but there are also just an increased volume based on our response to the hurricane and uh, the change in regulations. There's a lot of people right around that September 1st deadline that got their drawings in or were pushing really hard to hit that. There was a surge of applications and our team is doing the best we can, but you'll appreciate that we can't staff up simply to meet that surge because that surge will crest and then we'd have a bunch of folks in our department that, you know, frankly would need to be reallocated for uh, different work assignments. So I think instead there's some real practical responses. Mayor, I think with your approval and support, we're going to bring that to the TTI committee sometime, we think in January, to talk about some of the, some of the things that we're doing. One that I think is worth understanding, uh, historically it's been a first come, first serve basis. So whether you are a project, let's say like a complicated <coughs> hospital or multi-story skyscraper in the city, or in a little bungalow, a renovation to a home in the Heights or East Side or uh, your neighborhood in town, you basically take a number and you're first in line and you go in the queue. But what's being talked about is an allocation of resources that would be deployed so that those projects that are much more complex would be considered um, according to their complexity those and, and staffed accordingly. So some of those things that were relatively quick to turn around, they'd come fast and get out and we'd, we'd be able to triage our uh, projects much more quickly. So pardon me for a brief public service announcement, but I do think that this is gonna help uh, all of us in all of our neighborhoods around town. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Councilmember Kubash. 
Mayor, you mentioned uh, the Veterans Day Parade, and I want to thank you for instituting that. Do you have a time that that would be, since it's on a Sunday and we have church on Sundays? I want to say 11 o'clock, but if someone would check, if y'all would check with uh, Susan Christian Special Events and let me know. We do have a time for it. Um, it's either, going, I think it's either 11 or 12. I, I would I would think that uh, you know like one o'clock. You know, I'm just telling you that you know people are in church on Sundays and I, we want good attendance. And there, I know there's other events going on that weekend. I, I'm just mm -hmm. hoping that people will uh, will, will attend. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you, uh, Borkins. Councilman Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I missed part of the presentation with regards to the permanent center, but I do want to give credit where credit is due. Since Chris Butler has taken over that shop. Uh, I have had an opportunity to go over there twice uh, to walk through, not permitting, but just a process, getting a clear understanding of the process. And I've been so amazed and impressed with the attitude over there and, and the processes he was telling us, telling me uh, that he have in place um, moving forward. But more importantly, the people that uh, that are approaching the permitting center lately, I have spoken with contractors, even what they call them runners. They're all in awe of what Mr. Butler is doing over there. They're impressed with how he's cutting down on time and duplications. And I just want to commend you for picking Chris. And I, I just have a lot of respect for what he's doing. Just want to Thank pass you. that along. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilmember Martha Castex Tatum. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to also uh, make a comment about the permitting um, situation. I received a couple of um, emails about that in, uh, process, and I know that Director Haddock will take a look at it, but in the midst of the um, evaluation of the process, the, the concerns that the citizen that contacted our office had was about the payment for expediting. <coughs> Um, the permit um, that they pay twice to expedite the permits. So if we can just kind of make sure that as we are looking at the total um, change or improving of that process that we also take a look at the process for paying for expediting the process as well. Okay. And, we, and we certainly would do that. Uh, Councilman Mastardi. Mayor, I just want to take this opportunity to recognize the, that you did step up and do this for the veterans. I, you know, the women veterans that were here, they were so thrilled um, when you said that you would have that parade. It, mm -hmm. it means so much to people. Um, whether we have a large, the largest turnout or the smallest turnout, someone has to be the smallest, someone has to be the biggest. But the fact of the matter is, it's showing respect to our veterans. And I think that's what's important on that day. And um, it was, it, it's a tradition that we should, you know, carry forward and make sure that everyone knows that we care and respect their service. But um, just so you know, I've already started, I've, they've already asked me, are you going to ride with us on our float? Are you going to ride? Yeah. So they're that excited about it. So yeah. we're, they're going to be pushing and, and marketing it. But um, if we have to get a chaplain from the military, as uh, Councilmember Kubosh said, or someone to come down to have services, whatever we need to do uh, to make it right for everyone, I want to make sure it's successful. Thank and you. And thank you to special events for taking care uh, of it. And that's why we want to put out the notice now so people will know and uh, can spread the word. It will be on November the 11th, uh, which is on a Sunday. Um, but And we are pushing hard to, um, to get an um, um, excellent uh, grand marshal for that event. And so um, please, please uh, put that out in, in, in your, um, as you talk to people in your, in, in your respective districts. Having said that, I think that covers everything um, that I intend. We'll see um, uh, Council Member Martha Castec Tatum this evening, 6.30, in the Family Life Center, Fountain Life Center. And then we'll see Council Member Travis tomorrow night at Walbin Recreation Center. Both events are starting at 6.30. I know the Astros are playing uh, today and tomorrow. And so I uh, want to just give a shout out to, to the Astros. Um, you know, we're such a teaser. Um, and, uh, you know, we just tease. <laughs> teaser. Mayor, you know, last year you went to every game and they won. To my town hall meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I will say, you know, the in, in um uh, in fine order, and then they're going to come back on uh, to me. We, um, we never settle, and we never throw in the. But you know, the Astros and the Rockets told me to tell y'all to come out to the, uh, the to the town hall meeting uh, tonight in um, 
Martha Castell Tatum District, and to come out to uh, would be with Councilmember Travis tomorrow night. That's what the Astros and the uh, Rockets told me to tell y'all uh, to come to the meetings. Okay, now let's proceed with the agenda right quick. Okay, under the miscellaneous category, all items have been yeah. removed for separate consideration except items six and seven. Is there a motion? Move. Been moved and seconded. Discussion. Discussion in favor of post granted. <laughs> under the except work category, I. All items have been removed for separate consideration. Seeing and tabulation of bids, items 11, 12, and 15 have been removed for separate consideration. Is there a mo motion on the balance? Moved. It's been moved and seconded. In discussion in favor of opposed, granted. Okay, under resolutions, there's only one item. It has been removed for separate consideration. Under ordinances, item 18 has been pulled from the agenda and will not be considered. Previously, items 19 and 22 were listed as not in. They have been received. And item 20 has not been received and will be considered at the end of the agenda if it's received during the course of the meeting. Items removed are items 19, 21 through 24, 34, 36, and 37. Just need a vote on the balance. Discussion? Discussion? In favor, opposed, granted. Okay, items removed for separate consideration. Item 1. Is there a motion? Move. Okay. It's been moved and seconded on item one. Discussion in favor, opposed, granted. This is on the Board of Public Trust. And if you are here, please stand and come forward. Uh, position one, Matt Zeiss. Two is Russell Wade Greco. Three is Kimberly Dixon Dudley. Four is Lenora Sorola Pullman. Five is Catherine M. Zagari. Six is Cecilia Medina Garcia. Seven is Anish Nagar. Eight is Bill C. Littlejohn. Nine is John Marie Mar uh, Rogers. Good. Thank you all. And uh, we're going to start with Councilman McGagos. Thank you, Mayor. I know that uh, you had approached me some time ago and uh, said you wanted to serve uh, the city. And is there anything you can do? And I think this uh, board is appropriate and something that uh, I think you will do really, really well in. So thank you again for asking to serve the city of Houston. Yeah, and I certainly want to thank you, uh, all of you, uh, those who are here and those who are not here, for being willing to serve on this Board of Public Trust. Look forward to working with you all collectively. So thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks. Item two, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and second on item two. <laughs> Discussion on two. In favor, opposed, granted. Um, if you are here, if you will stand and come forward. Um, this is to the Board of Directors of Reinvestment Zone number 18. Now, position two is Harvey Clemens, uh, Jr. Position four is Eleanor Jones. Six is Edwina B. Uh, Lodge Barrett. And position seven is Allison Hay. Okay, we look forward to working with each of these individuals. Okay, item three, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and seconded on, on item three. Discussion on three, in favor, opposed, granted. If you are here, if you'll stand and come forward, this is to the Office of Business Opportunity <coughs> Advisory Board. Position one is Lena K. Cob Cobble. Uh, position two is Carol McNeil. Three is Jorge A. Mancella. Four is Ramesh Gunda. Five, Alicia B. Jemerson. Six is Brandy M. Harlow. Seven is Samuel K. Eaton, Sr. Eight is Jennifer Thai. Thai. Nine is Nicole West. Ten is Alan D. Bergeron. Eleven is Maria Rios. Twelve is Ron Ronel uh, Benz Gosme. Thirteen is Marlon Mitchell. 14 is Laura Jaramillo, 
and 15 is Christina D. Moore. Good morning to each and every one of you. Good to see all of you. I see some of my traveling partners there uh, as well. So uh, thank you all for your willingness to serve uh, on, the, on the advisory board of OBO. We're going to start off with Councilmember Stardy. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is a great group. Um, of course, I know a number of you, and I want to just point out a few, and it's because I, I've I've had the opportunity to have great conversations about um, your business and the opportunities and the things that matter. And um, Alicia Jimerson, I think you do a great job of representing your business, the industry, a female in an industry that's mainly ma men. <laughs> and and uh, you, you do, you stand out and you're, you're active at all levels. And that's, that means a great deal to women in, in industry. So. And then uh, Maria Rios, I know that you've been recognized again and again and again and do a great job of representing strong women that make a difference in our world and that uh, stand out among an industry that is, again, and primarily men and a very interesting market that uh, is very competitive. So we, we thank you both and all of you for representing and making a difference in our world. But it's very important that we have representation from all aspects and that everyone's at the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Castag Tatum. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I also want to thank you all for um, being willing to serve on this board. Um, the work that you will do will um, impact. Uh, so many businesses and so many people's lives in our communities. Wanted to say a special thank you to uh, Brandy Harlow, um, who is the owner uh, of South Post Oak Recycling in District K and a wonderful community partner. So I know that the makeup of this board will definitely um, help to promote businesses and help others to be involved in uh, the business that we do here in the city. So thank you so much for being willing to serve. All right, Councilmember Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, congratulations to each and every. Uh, good to see all of y'all. Um, you know, when you, um, Maria, first of all, let me, where's the appointment secretary? I know she's here somewhere. I just want to thank you for your effort in putting together, assembling a great team. And uh, Director Wright, thank you again for uh, working with this group. Your job is to set policy to make certain that this program is working. And we haven't, I haven't had any complaints uh, with regards to where it's going. Councilman, former Councilman Larry Green took this area very, very serious. And I know Castex Tatum and the entire uh, council uh, carry the same passion to make certain that we do what's right for small minority businesses and medium sized businesses. But I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, Sam Eaton is in here. Have y'all kicked him off? Y'all boy, that's a smart thing if y'all do that. Now I'm just teasing, that's my buddy. But uh, stay, because he always briefed me on how serious this committee works. And I just want you all to know, I commend each and every one of you for volunteering to set the right policies to make this uh, board effective. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Guy Eagles. Thank you, Mayor. I do want to <laughs> congratulate all of you for serving the city of Houston. Uh, the makeup and the diversity of this board represents the city of Houston. So thank you all for, for serving. A special shout out to Maria uh, for everything that you're doing. And I, as Council Member Stardick mentioned, uh, it's amazing the uh, uh, following you on, on Facebook uh, and the awards that you're receiving uh, and the recognition that you receive. So uh, thank you again for serving. Council Member Cisneros. Um, I, too, just want to add my appreciation and thanks to you for serving and stepping up and, and representing, you know, all of, all of Houston on this advisory board. Also wanted to give a shout out to Laura Maria, who's here. I think, I'm assuming you're here because of them, too, to support them. You know, as the um, Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, you were important to all of us. We have, um, you know, this is such a changing world and, and, and uh, the demands of, you know, on our workforce are changing and, and you are right in the, a place you need to be to help, help navigate our, our community um, through through all that the innovation and change that's that's happening here in Houston thank you so much okay so look thank you all for being willing to serve an outstanding group I mean this is it's an outstanding group and uh, represent the city extremely well and just let us know what we need to do in order to increase uh, business opportunities for everyone okay so thank you all so very much for serving thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes. Mayor, point of personal privilege while they're taking the photo. Can I make an announcement? Um, um, Chair recognizes. Chair recognizes Councilman Borkins. Uh, uh, Councilman Cisneros just recognized um, Laura Murillo, who chairs the Hispanic Chamber. It's an announcement that the Hispanic Chamber elected officials reception will take place tomorrow at City Hall at 5.30. I assume it's in the legacy room. Okay, uh, 5.30 tomorrow for uh, elected officials hosted by the Hispanic Chamber uh, in the legacy room. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next item. Hey, item four, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and seconded. Chair, recognize Councilmember uh, Knox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I have no problem with any of these things. I just have a, a clarification that I'd like to make. I spoke with Mr. Kelly about this before it came out. Under the uh, public safety criminal justice section, it currently reads, support legislative efforts to prevent and combat violent crimes by repeat violent offenders. That sentence disturbs me a little bit because it suggests that somehow it's okay if you're a violent offender for the first time. And I think our position needs to be we should be against all violent offenders. The second sentence, support legislation to reduce gun violence. My problem with that section is that gun violence is a portion of violence and it suggests that somehow if, we, if you use violence with some other tool other than a gun, it's okay. So I've, I've um, put forth, uh, I'll think everybody has a copy of a change that I'd like to make in that section, reduce it to one sentence that says simply, support legislative efforts to prevent and to combat violent crimes and reduce violence. Because I think that covers it all. These are principles, not specific pieces of legislation. And I think the broader that is, the more we can work with the Texas legislature to work in those areas. Thank you. If I, if I can just respond, give you rationale on, the, on why it's written as it is. On the first one, the repeat offenders, that's to focus on parole and, and, and people that are on probation. I understand okay. that. Because that's, that's one area we have thousands of people who are out on parole and probation, and we want to highlight that. Of course, we're going to, be, we're going to, we're going to support any legislation that go against anybody who chooses to offend. Uh, but this is to specifically kind of target or to emphasize that the legislature needs to do more uh, to make sure that people who are on parole and who are on probation are not re-offending because there are a number of times when they are out and they are, um, there are violations and they're not moving on them quick enough and then they repeat while they're on parole or probation. So that's why the, that's why the significance of the repeat. That's, that's the reason for that. I, I get that. I, I get, if I may re respond to you. Um, I get that, but it seems to me that that if we are just against violence in general, that, that covers it. That we yeah. would naturally go, we would be supporting legislative for repeat or any, any violent offender. And these are principles, not, not uh, specific legislative. And the, and the proposals that are before you, are, and I think we can all acknowledge, are somewhat general already. But, but the, the repeat on this one, there's been attention focused on people who are on parole who have gone, I mean, that was a recent case. There have been several recent cases. Um, so that's, that's the, I, I hear what you're saying. So what are we going to do about bullying? We have nothing in here about bullying, well, which is a form of violence. I know. And that's, that's on everybody's mind as well. well. I, I know. See, and making when, it broader, but I think we can cover more things. I, I understand. And then, the, the, and then on the second one, dealing with gun violence, that simply mirrors the mayor's commission on gun violence. They came out with a series of recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so um, it simply mirrors the fact that we had the mayor's uh, commission on gun violence to reduce gun violence. And they had a they had a number of recommendations, and so, so this. So the commission's okay with other violence. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we're not okay. We're just going to focus on gun violence. No, but the commission the commission came forth with a with a number of recommendations on gun violence, and so this recommendation is simply to mirror the guns commission recommendations. Again, we, we don't ignore everything, anything else that comes up, uh, but that's the, that's the purpose. So I, I, I would ask that we keep the language um, pretty much as it is. Uh, but I understand, I understand what you, 
you know, Councilman, we will continue to, if there are things that come up, uh, we'll continue to look at them. Okay, so can can I proffer this uh, amendment then to just get a vote on it? Yeah, yeah, you've already, it, it's in writing, so it's yes, already. It's, yeah. Right, now what I, would, what I would simply say on this and on any other matters, one and, it's one and done. If there are other excellent ideas that come. Well, my position, Mayor, is that it, when we're making a statement of principles, that we want to work toward in, in the legislative session, um, I think it needs to be specific, but a little broad so that we can support things that we might not know about that someone else is like a bullying issue or something like that. And we would, I, I agree with you, but as a stated principle for the city of Houston, I think that we should be against violence of any kind, no matter who's doing it. And, um, and I think this sentence more effectively represents what I believe to be the, tr the true principle of the citizens of Houston. I got you, I got you. Okay, the, the conversation for right now, because the amendment is before us, it is in writing, so let's limit our conversation for now to Councilmember Knox's amendment, okay? So let's limit our conversation to Councilmember Knox's amendment, which is before us. Um, the next on the, is Councilmember Laster. Mayor, amendment. I was just gonna say something generally, so I'll withhold my comments okay. until after this amendment. Okay, we'll bring you back. So on the amendment, Councilmember Starnick, Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, I keep, I keep pushing that we're, we need to make sure that we know what's going into our right of ways and that we have some kind of system that protects the ADA requirements and things like that. And we continue to get feedback from your team that says, well, it'll never happen because the lobbyist is like, you know, so it's a defeatist position. And I don't, I don't, I think that's the, the approach. I think we should go ahead and put that in there. Anything with uh, per, supporting ADA. It, did I miss it in here? Yeah. Is there no. something that you put can in? We, have a point of order. Can, can we hold it just for one second? On so the on the council member Knox amendment. Yeah, I'll be happy back. to, and if, if, if we can come back to No, it. we'll come back. Thank you. No, no. Put her back in. We're back, okay. Wiggins on the amendment. Council member mm -hmm. Barkins on the amendment. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I got a question, council member Lasser. Well, can we add Knox? Knox. What is the last amendment? I'm so sorry, Councilmember Knox. You, alike, you, you guys look so much alike. I got it confused. Uh, it's the mu it's the mustache. Uh, got a question uh, on this where it says supportive. Le le is it too late to uh, to amend your amendment? And I just want to add a word to it. It says support legislative efforts to prevent and to combat violent crimes and reduce violence, and change it to support legislative efforts to prevent and prevent and to combat gun, insert the word gun twice, gun violent crimes and reduce gun violence. That's, the exact, that's the exactly not his point. <laughs> not a friendly, not a friendly amendment. Okay. okay. Council Member Kubash. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'll be supporting uh, Council Member Knox's amendment because uh, Jose Flores, uh, who was murdered, uh, in District um, H was not killed by a gun. Uh, there are, um, and I understand the repeat offenders, Mayor, but there are 49% of the people released on unsecured bonds after the federal judge's ruling last June of a year ago has produced tens of thousands of people that are running around with no conviction after having been arrested multiple times. One of the looters was arrested five times during Hurricane Harvey and released on a 24-hour unsecured bond. It's the hug-a-thug. So we have these, we have these no-shows, and, and I'm certainly against gun violence, but I bond people out of jail every day for family violence, and rarely ever is a gun used. It, they'll say striking of the hand, <clears throat> choking of the neck, uh, cutting off their air. There's other things that you can hurt somebody with other than just a gun, but I'm against gun violence, and I certainly am against that. I, I don't mind the word gun being in there someplace, but we should also have it as, as a, a, a more broad topic. Uh, I get calls continually, people trying to figure out how they're, they're going to send their kids to school <laughs> by being bullied at the bus stop and on the buses. Uh, one of my sons told me that he had to get on the bus the other day, and I said, man, you almost got arrested out there. But, you know, he got upset that his kid, his, my, my granddaughter's being bullied on the bus. 
And, and there are these types of situations. There's a lot more violence than just gun violence. And, and so I, I'm, I certainly support your idea of what you're trying to do. You're the only one sitting at this table who has served as a police officer and the head of the gang task force of Houston. And I appreciate that. And I certainly respect your opinion. And, and, and I will be supporting your amendment. Well, Councilmember Christie. I observe this as a, a friendly amendment, actually, and um, and I uh, will support it because I think it's an astute observation. So I'll, I'll support it. Okay. And we have the Mayor's Commission on Gun Violence, it's the implementation of their recommendations, and that's why it's in on this on this. Um, that's why it's in this document. Uh, Council Member. No, no, after the vote. Okay, I have to stop after the vote. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the. All in favor of the amendment? Aye. Aye. Let's show our hands. Let me just one, two, three, four. In favor of the amendment. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the amendment passes. We need the nose. And opposed. We need the nose. Okay, and I oppose. Oppose okay. the amendment, Mayor. Is it yes. on record? We need, we need All right. Okay. All right, the amendment, the amendment is before us. I didn't get all of them down here. Yes. So okay. The city secretary needs a record of the yes votes. Okay, on the yes votes, again, on the yes vote. All in favor of the amendment, show your hands on the yes votes. No, we don't need a roll. All in favor of the amendment. You can all call a roll call before the vote has been completed. Okay. One, two. What are we doing now? We're re No, 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 we're just taking notes. Just a Roll call, Mayor, please. The vote has been completed. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Three, There's all. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four. Is that what you got? Okay. Okay. Martin, Lasker, Cisneros, Travis, Kubas, Stardick. Cohen and uh, Castex. Four. Four. Point of order. Can can you can you tell us who? <coughs> okay. The next item. We've got it. Okay. All right. We're back on the we on the item as amended. On the item as amended. Discussion on the. Well, part of order. But, but what, what, may we have a good record of who voted for and who voted against it? Um, who voted against? The city secretary. We're on the we're on the item as amended. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Councilmember Laster. Mayor, thank you. Um, uh, one of the, when I was first reviewing the uh, principles, I, I I too got caught up in the specifics, and uh, one of the specifics that I had an opportunity to talk to uh, Bill Kelly about yesterday was retrying that effort to, uh, um, uh, uh, of, on our approach on how we enforce uh, no parking on the grass. Mm -hmm. We ran into some buzz saws last <laughs> session, but I'd like to see if we could do that again. And Bill tells me that we're, that's on our legislative agenda, and we're certainly all going to be working for that. So thank you, Mayor, and I want to thank Bill Kelly for answering that Sorry. question for me. You're more than welcome. Uh, Councilman Mastardi. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, with regard to the, to the amendment, um, just real quick, the enforcement of group homes has been an issue for all of us here, and um, I think that the amendment is going to help us support that. I think um, the question that I raised earlier, Mayor, about the ADA and how we how we support that, is there anywhere that you all could highlight that you feel that was included in these principles? What was that, what was that again, Councilman? The Schneider. Americans with Disability Act and the fact that with these um, poles, these nodes and different things are being placed in sidewalks, in our right-of-ways, just all over the place and we have no control of it locally. Sorry. Uh, is there any place in here that you've addressed that? Where is it? Because I certainly support the, that, the, that position. I, I, I'm sure you Where, do. And comes, I, Section. I would um, announce Bill Kelly. Just announce who you are. Sure. Bill Kelly, Director of Government Relations for Mayor Turner. On in, the Environment and Public Utilities Section, number three, support legislation that protects adequate compensation for the use of City of Houston property and public's rights of way. 
Uh, we tried to make that be as broad as we can be specifically um, to combat efforts like we had last session with Senate Bill 1004. Can you explain that to me, how that stops people from doing it? Adequate compensation? And protection of property. And protection, that, well, it says support, am I reading the right way? Supports legislation that protects adequate compensation for the use of the city of Houston property and public right of way. That doesn't Correct. stop or prevent people or send the message that we don't want them putting it in places that uh, may prevent um, access for Americans with Disability Act or any other persons in wheelchairs or you know, elderly or anyone like that. So I don't, I don't know if this is, I get where you, that part, mm -hmm. I, the compensation part, but how does that deter them from coming in ahead and saying, well, we, we're compensating you or we're taking care of it or? I, I, would, I would also point to- Are you just looking at it as a deterrent? I would also look at number one on neighborhood improvement and quality of life where it support technical legislation that assists the city's homeowners and strengthens neighborhoods, environment, quality of life, as well as neighborhood park programs. Um, that. What specific language, Councilmember Stardick, would you like to include in there? Well, I apologize for not coming forward with something. I'm, but I, I certainly support that. I think we need to figure out some language with legal that would be okay. uh, effective, that would bring us to the point where the, it puts um, notice to the, the state and to other cities that may be reading our principles that this is something that we're advocating, um, that the local level should have some kind of uh, control or some kind of catch where if it impedes or um, becomes detrimental to the community that we have some kind of say at that point. These are these. How do you describe this bill? These are these are these are broad legislative principles that outline. No, I'm um, talking about this just on this particular subject matter. The polls, the um, the nodes, the nodes. How the small it? cell uh, yes. debate. Um, uh, first, I would point towards the uh, pretty comprehensive website that we have at. Uh, HughLegislativeReport.org, specifically on SB 1004, uh, where we talk about this testimony that the city submitted. Uh, I believe I actually have, and if, if, I, if I'm wrong, she can correct me, um, some information I think it was while she well, was maybe, transitioning. Maybe, in. maybe what we are asking, what maybe is, is to, to allow municipalities greater say on the placement of these nodes. Is that what, is that, does that capture what you're, what you're saying? I think that might probably be more I think it'd probably be point. more likely to happen um, by saying it that way because I understand the the then, objections at the state level. Then, so I think if we had, but we have to show our intent at the very least right. to protect our, our person. Why don't you put forth that as, a, as an amendment now, just verbally, to 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 um, uh, to grant municipalities more control over the placement of these nodes. So moved. Thank you for the motion. It's been mm -hmm. seconded. Any, any discussion? Any objection? Okay. None. It's granted. Thank, Thank you. you. Greater what? Greater 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 control, control of the placement of these nodes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman McCubosh. Mayor, I was uh, very disappointed this year. I didn't serve on this committee, and I, I was not selected to do so. And that's unfortunate because just like when I hear some of the things that may come up in the legislature, I, I don't want to be Bill. down there fighting Bill, what we're you. trying to do here. And so um, just like when I heard about parking in the yards, I, I don't like cars parking in the yards, but I, as I drive around the city of Houston, I don't see them parking in the yards in Tanglewood or, or in River Oaks. I, I see them out in the, in the lower income uh, communities where Grandma has, has, has invited her family over and, and they stayed a little too long and, and, and there's no place on the street and they're parking in the yard. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about penalizing uh, seniors uh, who, who may have fall prey to families doing things that they, they really didn't have any, in object, any intention for them to do. I, I would like to look a little more at what our legislative uh, uh, package is. I, I haven't seen any proposed legislation. This is a, uh, a general statement, but since I wasn't on the committee this year, I'm, I'm really not aware of, of what we're pushing and and what. Councilmember, were you invited to attend the meetings? Sir? Were you invited to attend? Ad hoc, it's an ad hoc uh, I committee. They, you, you, I wasn't appointed to that. No, we, the meetings were open. I, I, I've never been informed of the meetings. So, so let me say this, I, and I'll leave it open for discussion. 
so that I, I would like to have a week to see what our legislative package is. You can what, get, Council Member, let me just say, I've been in the legislature for, was in the for 27 years. Found. There is no legislation filed, sir. What, what, are there any bills? Legislation, uh, legislation is not filed. The earliest is in November. No, no, sir. Uh, but, but has the dra draft of Councilman McCubosh not drafted? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to highlight for purposes of uh, this discussion, we had a discussion during the budget meeting regarding the Harvey component and just um, the breadth of that. And so in that discussion, or I should say my comment to uh, the Director of Government Relations indicated just to make it as broad as possible, which I think, of course, is what the administration is pro planning to do, but we just highlighted that. So I just wanted to bring that into this conversation for the record officially since we discussed it in, in the budget. So things like flood mitigation, um, of course, these are all things that I know that we're advocating for, but just making sure that that's on this record. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Travis. Thank you, Mayor. I will be voting against this um, for a number of reasons, but uh, probably the biggest reason is the fact that it's very broad and vague. And I know that's its attribute, but it's also its demise. Uh, the fact is, when I look at this, I like to see more specifics before I commit to anything. And I'll give you a couple examples. One of them happens to be like the very second sentence of public safety, where it says, support improvements to the criminal justice codes, juvenile justice codes, and transportation codes. Well, I support improvements. We all support improvements. But my improvement may not be your improvement. So I'd like to see what those improvements are that we're discussing, because it may not be improvement. It may, to me, be a setback. Same thing when we go down to support legislation that enhances consumer protections. I'm for that. But then again, that also means excessive regulations, possibly. I'd like to see what those regulations happen to be before I, I support that. And I could go on and on as we go forward. If we go down to health, uh, support legislation and funding for expanded health care coverage. Are we, are we going to be supporting Obamacare? I, I don't know if that's what that means. I'd like to have more specifics on these before I commit to it. Again, a lot of these things I, I see no issue with, but a few of these things I'm very concerned with, and I don't want to be on record as supporting things that may go against what, what my constituents believe in. But thank you very much. Well, the reality is, the reality is, is that you're not going to know what those things are until they're found. And things are constantly found during the legislative process. If you're saying that you don't want to, you don't want to participate in the governmental process, then um, then you will vote no. But but the way the legislative process works, no bill is filed until November, and most bills are not filed until after January. And then there are a number of amendments that are going to come up uh, that you have to either work to support or you. So um, you know. I, I think I'm quite familiar with how the legislative process works. So um, you're not going to see any of, uh, any of these bills right now. You have, you have 150 members in the legislature and uh, 31 in the, in the Senate. So you have to have general principles and guidance. And quite frankly, this is not a new, this is not a new process. Uh, Council Member Christie. Uh, Mr. Kubar, I, say, I want to tell you over the seven years that I've been chair of this committee. I've been on the committee, off the committee, invited, not invited. Just show up. Just go to any of these committees you're you're invited to, and uh, and yeah. But but you can you can show up to this. And the only committee you can't go to is the the, the cabinet meeting. <laughs> May you yield for just a moment, sir? Yes, sir. Yours. I, I spoke to Bill Kelly about it, and I wasn't put on the committee. And, and from what I understand, I wasn't welcomed in the committee unless I was. Well, that is not appointed. true, Councilmember Kobach. I'm not going to let you say that now. You've gone too far on that one. You were invited. I've asked him about no, it repeatedly, no. and he Co never told me Co a day. Councilmember Kobach, I was left out of. Councilmember Kobach, just because you weren't appointed to it, doesn't mean that you're not welcome and invited to any meeting that exists. Hey, man, so you're telling me that next year I can attend these meetings? You can now? attend any council meeting. Any council meeting. So would you call him back up and let him I know am that? Okay. Let May me I just one second, one second. May I one, have my one, time no, back? One, one second, one second, one second. If you want to vote against the council member, Kibos, you can do that, but you don't have to make those type of statements. I don't want to vote no, against No, let me just say that. If you I, want, I just want to be included. That's well, all. Well, you, I just want to be a part. Well, <laughs> don't be mad at me, Mayor, for wanting to be a well, part. Well, you're, no you're no longer on the outside, council member, Kibos. You're on the inside. But, you're, you but you're keeping me on the outside of the inside. No, you keep yourself on the outside. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Kubar, is out One second. Councilmember Christie. <laughs> Thank you.
I'll get you a unanimous city council vote that you can go to the Kamal all the time. Councilmember Guy, Councilmember Guy goes. Councilmember Guy goes. I'm sorry, Councilmember Guy goes. Thank you, Mayor. I support the guiding principles and look forward to the specifics and hope that our legislative team works with our area legislators to push for bills that strengthen enforcement of our parking on the yards ordinance that facilitate partnership and also that facilitate partnerships between TxDOT municipalities, the municipal police departments and management districts that make entering into maintenance agree agreements along our freeways easier and bills that strengthen enforcement of environmental polluters or allow municipalities to crack down on habitual violators. Thank you. Thanks. Council, I'm Pro Jim Cohen. Thank you. Uh, as chair of the group, let me, let me clear up some information or misinformation. Um, it, it, first of all, it was a group. It wasn't a committee, it was a group. Um, and the meetings, with all due respect, Mayor, I have to say, the meetings weren't open um, but to anyone because then we run into a question of quorum. But it was open if you wanted to come as a council member and submit uh, and discuss and advocate for a particular issue, and a number of you did. So I think that was, that's, and made very compassionate and moving statements. And so that, I think that's terribly important. Um, and, and also I would note, uh, Council Member Kobash, with all due respect, as I, as I remember, um, you were on the previous year. So uh, we can't have all the same people on every single year. So we do move it around. And, uh, and finally, I would remind everyone that before we ever met as a group, uh, everyone was invited, continues to be invited, to submit their concerns. So uh, I was pleased with the way we operated. Um, we did have council members uh, Robinson, Edwards, Martin, and Christy in the group, and I think it functioned well. Thank you. Yeah, council member, council member Travis. Mayor Pro Tem, thank you very much for clearing that up. So Christy, I know when and where they are. Uh, I have been here for three years and I've never been on this committee. Uh, I don't know when the meetings are or where the meetings are, so if I did, uh, I might or might not attend. I, I can't tell I'll attend every meeting, but if I'm aware of them, then I at least have a chance to do so. But I do appreciate uh, Mayor Pertemsey clearing that up because I think that's the point that Councilman Kubash was making. Thank you very much. Councilman Lasker. What's that song? Uh, wise men don't enter into the world or something like that or fools fear, fear to tread or whatever. But I just simply want to say that I want to speak in favor of the concept of having general guidelines and principles. I think that's important for us to help guide us uh, I, too, am interested in the specifics of legislation. We all are, or we wouldn't be sitting on this city council. Uh, however, I think that that proves the point that we would never get a list of specifics voted on by this council uh, because we would all be arguing and rightfully debating uh, specifics. Therefore, I think it's important that we move forward with the general guidelines and principles and if the city's going to be doing something that I disagree with, I'm just going to be in Austin working against it, like I'm sure any one of y'all will. So, Mayor, uh, accept my uh, comments on behalf of uh, the general guidelines. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to take a moment and commend and thank the, uh, your commission on, uh, against gun violence. Um, I want to bring it back home a little bit. Uh, when individuals volunteered to come, and address some issues that were happening around the country uh, with, with regards to gun violence, uh, our community came together, whether it was a rabbi, whether it was a Methodist, whether it was Christian, whether it was a, a Buddhist, whatever it was, uh, people came together to support an effort to tackle gun violence. So I appreciate you, Mayor, assembling this committee. And we will, colleagues, uh, over time, uh, receive recommendation from the commission to enforce some rules to make certain we can prevent that in our city. We may not always agree with what their recommendations may be, and we can offer amendments, 
But for the most part, I know I don't have the time to put in. I think they're putting in, they're putting experts together and they're putting time and effort together to come with some recommendation to deal with these issues. So I just want the ones that are listening, that have put in their time, uh, I appreciate what they're doing and I look forward to continuing to work with them there. Thank you. Council Member Stardick. Thank you, Mayor. I, uh, my Chief of Staff did, Mayor Potem, I'll make sure she hears oh, this conversation. Mayor Potem, Council Member Stardick. I just want to make sure that, um, that I do note that my, my Chief of Staff did attend one of the meetings to present about the TDCJ notification um, from the, to, to, the, to the municipalities regarding you know, releases and all that we have get notice, Mayor, because what's happening, as you stated earlier, the parolees and all that are out in our that are out in our community and that we need to make sure that we understand about the releases, where they're being released to, because they're continuing to serve their sentence out on the outside and it's in our communities and we want to make sure that we fully understand that. I think that's something that we need to make sure that's um, included in our intent. Um, also, uh, my chief of staff presented the third reservoir, that the state should be supporting that going forward as well, that we need to make sure that anything with regard to infrastructure uh, to protect our city um, is at the state level and being, and being served, and we're all on the same page there. So I think those are two items that we did um, bring to the meeting. Uh, the, group, the group, the group. Thank you. Um, and I do, I do um, support my colleagues on making sure that there's better communication. On the next item, I'll be talking about communication. That um, we all are very, 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 very busy, and we all have um, different uh, schedules. And we need to make sure that we're all being included. And that, Mayor, I think the message to your staff is that everyone should be included in these messages. Is that true? Yes, everyone should be included. I want to make sure that that is the case. And your chief of staff seems to, the to think this they is humorous to, that it's not. Yeah, and to the extent they choose to participate. But, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to make note that the chief of staff thinks it's it's humorous, and I don't think it's humorous. I think uh, it's excuse important. Excuse me. No, no, respect my staff now. Well, she, no, 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 Council she's, Member she's being respectful no, behind no, you. No, no, yes. Council Member Stardick, you will respect my staff. And, and I, I will not let you disrespect my staff. Now, now it that, goes both ways. No, you will respect my staff. It goes both ways. Okay. It is very. This is very serious. It's very serious. This is very serious. This is what we're taking to the state. This is what we're taking to the message for our taxpayers. We will not be disrespected. I communication to our colleagues. They have been on the record today that they are not receiving communication, and she is responsible for that communication by her team. I want to make sure that it's on the record that you support that. Thank you. Each one of you will respect my staff, just like I respect yours. And I'm not going to let you talk about any one of my staff, my department heads. You will get a serious rebuff, okay? I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. I'm not tolerating it anymore, okay? I respect your staff. I've always been respectful of your staff. You will do the same with mine. Councilmember Cisneros. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to just say that I support the principals. Um, I I um, was not on the, this the, this group, but I did um, make had and one one of them had to do with um, uh, the plastic litter in our city and how to deal with that. Another was about um, the speeding in neighborhoods and and uh, you know I had a suggestion about that with and then. Chief Yes, and Chief Acevedo was there. Um, and then um, also um, about you know, the density of boarding houses in neighborhoods. So I, I welcome the opportunity to, to talk about those things. And I looked very carefully in the principles. And Mike, I had a question. I was like, well, I don't see them, those things in here. But then you know, as I came to understand that the principles are broad, that they, that they actually, you know, it, it covers those things. So I'm comfortable with that, and I support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Kubash. I, w I want to thank uh, Mayor Pro Tem Cohen for explaining the, the, the group, the, the legislative group, and how it, I appreciate. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and also, uh, I, I know, Mayor, you said I, I was welcome at any time, but, but for an, a meeting to be an open meeting where all council members can go, it has to be posted 72 hours in advance publicly. And it was never uh, public, publicly posted. Uh, it, it wouldn't, 
it, it, w it wasn't an open meeting because it was never never posted. So I, I know that for a fact. So I uh, I just want to be a part mayor. And, and if you if you want to be angry at me or fuss at me because I want to be a part and I want to be a part of what the city's doing, I don't want to have to go to the legislature, stay in a hotel, and meet with legislators and combat and what we're paying to do. You know, because we're paying lobbyists to 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 uh, support and and to promote the city's agenda. I just simply want to know what it is and what parts of it play. And, and I don't want you uh, angry at me because I want to be a part. And if you are, well, you know, you just have to get over it because I just want to be a part of what's going on. And, and, and I, I care about the city and I care about the, our legislation. And, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish. Thank you. And Councilman McCubosh, I hear what you're saying. Words have meaning and there are feelings that goes behind those words. I never question anyone's motivation. So I'm not, I, you know, it, you'll have to go a long way to, for me to get angry with you, okay? There are other words I can certainly describe, but. Uh, well, you sounded uh, angry at me, so, you know, it's yeah. a lot. I mean, <laughs> Council, uh, can, may, I pro -tem, co may I pro tem Cohen? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilmember Kubash. And I, I would just add, I. Just at the end, when Councilmember Kubash said that we have lobbyists up there and we shouldn't have to go up there, and I understand that, but I, I will say that it does have an impact. I mean, having sat on the other side and having been up in the legislature, it was very, um, it was important to me that if some of the council members from Houston either called or came up or talked to me about advocating for something that, that they personally felt very strongly about, that really had a, an impression on me. So uh, as much as I think, you know, we'll see how the vote goes, but if this passes, that's fine, but it shouldn't prohibit any of us from taking leadership in things that we really care about. Um, and, and it does make an effect. And, and I would suggest, Councilmember Kubash, you know a lot of people up there, so um, I'm sure they're hearing from you would be, uh, would have an effect on them. Councilmember Kubash. Thank you for your kind words. I, I, I appreciate that. And I don't remember having one of these um, legislative principles last year. I don't think we voted on one of these last yes, year. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Did we? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Prepare for the vote. In favor? Opposed? Opposed. Show. Mayor. Yeah. Councilman, so, uh, are we voting? Travis Who's up? And Borkins. Uh, show yeah. Councilmember Travis and Councilmember Borkins voting yeah, against. Mayor, uh -huh. I was trying to comment before. Really? Did we'll vote no show Councilmember Travis and Councilmember Borkins voting no. Are you voting no? Are you voting no? I was trying to get in and I hit the wrong button to have a comment on the mayor. And the reason was the word guns. And that was my concern. And if we could not, and apparently we cannot add the word gun violence based on what's going on around the country, I cannot support it for that reason alone. I want to be clear. I support the legislation. I support Bill King and I, I mean, Bill Kelly. Oh Lord knows you know I said oh Bill Kelly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, you know what I meant. Okay, I support that, Bill that, Kelly that, tremendously. That, Bill, Mr. Kelly, uh, brief me, Mayor. And what I'm saying is, I support the initiative. Okay, but if you think, Mayor, no, the question I have, this is what I was trying to get let's to. Let's get back. Look, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get to that. Let's mayor, talk if about, you think, yeah, if you think Mayor, that supporting an item is carrying the agenda, I support okay. it. Well, uh, but I just want the word gun included. Okay, we're back to the vote. In favor? Opposed? Show Councilmember Travis. Opposed or not? I support it. I'm going to go with it. Show Councilmember Travis voting no. Okay. Next item, Amanda Secretary. Item five, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and is there a second on five? Is there a second on five? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Councilman Mastardic on five. Council Point of pray, personal privilege. Can you read uh, oh, have record read back Council Member Boykin's comments just a minute ago, no. please? No. May I, may I, <laughs> Mayor, was I recognized? Council Member Stark. Thank you. Oh, I apologize. Oh, oh. We um, continue to um, changes and you know some differences of opinion on certain issues. So I know it's important that we're at the table. I have attended some of. They do. I, I know you know better than anyone, being from the state level. 
that they have influence, or is that your opinion? I shouldn't assume that. Yes, they do. They have quite a bit. So I want to make sure that we they're all in alignment with um, where we are, where the, ma the big cities are, because this is um, a lot of little cities that are members of this as well, and so we want to make sure we're all working together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, just want to uh, uh, thank the council for supporting this and to also let you know that, as you know, TML supports is a combination of 1,150 cities advocating for a large range of issues. Um, I will be representing the city of Houston um, as a TML board of director. Um, please know that uh, from my previous experience of serving in San Marcos, I also participated with TML as a small city. I'm looking forward to representing the city of Houston um, as a big city. Uh, and I will, I am committing to communicating with you that you are well aware of what will take place and what has taken place um, as we go forward. And I represent you on TML. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Member uh, Mayor, I, I understand uh, the need to be involved in Texas Municipal League, uh, but sometimes when I, when I have dealt with uh, state issues. It's not really Democrat against Republican. It's big cities versus little cities. It's the rural communities versus the, 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 the large cities. And so I, I, I know that it's heavily weighted for the smaller cities. So I, I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, I, I was going to go to the Texas Municipal League in, Dow, uh, in, in Fort, Fort Worth this past week or two, and I, I, I wasn't able to do it. Did any of our council members go? Did any did anyone attend? Okay, and but you're 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 going to be on the board. May I ask, uh, Ms. Tatum, you're you're a board of director. Yes. Okay, well I'm pleased that you're there, and I look forward to your your comments. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilmember Castak Tatum. And there is a summary that um, Bill Kelly will be able to provide for, to everyone from the most recent conference. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I wasn't. I just was appointed to the board, and so we will be able to disseminate the information that took place at the last conference in Fort Worth. Okay. Any other discussion on five? In favor? Opposed? Granted. Item eight. Is there a motion? Move. Moved and seconded on item eight. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Granted. Item nine, is there a motion? It's been moved and seconded on item nine. Discussion? In favor of post grant. Mm -hmm. Item 10 has been tagged by Councilmember Travis. Um, will you release your tag for a moment? Councilmember, uh, Council if Martin. I could, it, it's, isn't this the same company we had an issue with a month ago? Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Okay. Item 10 has been tagged by Councilmember Travis. Item 11, is there a motion? Move. The move and second. Item 11, discussion. In favor, opposed, granted. Oh, Councilmember Gallegos. I'm sorry. Let's back up. Councilmember Gallegos on item 11. Hey, Mayor, I just wanted to point out that three support vehicles that will be used at the Bush and Hobby airports are in this item and, and, and will be used also in Station 81 at the Hobby Airport. I had the opportunity to join the B-Shift for dinner a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things they brought to my intention was the age of their equipment and glad that they will be able to address that concern by approving this purchase today. So appreciate your support. Thank you. Any other discussion? In favor, opposed, granted on item 11. Item 12, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and second on item 12. Discussion? In favor, opposed, granted. <laughs> item 15, is there a motion? Move. In favor, opposed, granted. Item 11, is a resolution? Too many. Oh. It's 15. Yeah, 15. 17. <clears throat> this is the resolution supporting the nomination of Councilmember Amanda Edwards to the National League of Cities uh, Board of Directors. I know she has um, attended, was uh, in attendance in D.C. 
I think it's important. Um, I'm going to just reinforce the same message that the communication is very important so that we understand that we're not uh, bringing our own personal opinions, that we're bringing the opinions of the body and that we uh, work together very good at communicating. So we look forward to your to your correspondence. Look forward to support Councilmember Edwards on this uh, nomination. Uh, I think you'll do a little bit more than communicating. I think you will get in and roll your slim. More importantly, make certain that they under clearly understand diversity and what we have to offer from an economy, diverse economy. And I trust you, uh, Councilman Mel, was to be able to deliver that message. So I look forward to have you, to you can from a convention to anything that's happening uh, in other places. And when they talk about it, that conversation to us to get it to Houston. Thank you. Any other discussion on that, Councilman Edwards? Thank you. Expressed their viewpoints on this, and I'm certainly willing in wanting to communicate effectively not only just our needs in, in from Houston to NLC. Um, it is an advocacy body, and so we can leverage that body as well in terms of some of the needs that we have here, but also in terms of bringing that information back. Sometimes we don't necessarily a formal context, so whether it's in a committee or in our pop-off sessions, whatever is most uh, whatever is most conducive to the conversation. But absolutely, I plan to bring back home information that is helpful and useful and make sure all my colleagues are informed. Any other discussion on 17? In favor? Opposed? Granted on 17. Item 19 is an ordinance. On 19. Discussion on 19. In favor? Opposed? Granted. <laughs> Twenty-one is an. Mm -hmm. Twenty is in the second item. Yeah, twenty-one is an ordinance. Just need a vote. On item twenty-one, discussion in favor, opposed, granted. Twenty-two. Oh, sorry, is an sorry, back, back up. Item twenty-one, for Councilman Knox. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm I'm in support of this particular one. I just had a, an issue come up um, during the RCA. This particular property is going to impact the Lazy Brook Timber Grove community which it says offers highly rated schools. So I asked the question, have they checked with the schools to see if there's capacity uh, to handle this new, this new project? And I was told, no, they didn't bother to do that. They were gonna do that after the construction began. So um, I had my staff check on it. It turns out that all the schools do have capacity and it's not gonna be a problem. But is there any way that we could make that part of the RCA process to require these people to research that impact that they're going to have on the school to assess. Well, the developer is already obligated to contact the board, notify the board when these developments are coming. Right, when the developments are coming, but they, they're not required to check with the school district to see if they're, it's going to negatively impact their capacity levels. But they're, they're, they're obligated to notify the board. That they're oh, the school board? Okay, well, that, that wasn't clear in the, in, in the, I was told that they hadn't, reached out to the school district to find out at that point. Yeah, but the city doesn't do it. We don't do it. We don't. The city does not do it. Right. We don't do it, right. but we don't do we require the person submitting the city the does not require. Okay. Right. Maybe that's something we can think about because we'll just get comments about it later, you know, if it turns out that there's not capacity. You know. Anyway, I'm for it, but uh, in this case it looks like it's gonna be okay. Well, council member started. Thank you. I think my colleague has a good point that we should, probably should, um, part of the packet, that there should be some documentation that shows that the, the communication was completed. So if that's, you know, rather than us having to circle back. So I appreciate the comment. Any other discussion on item 21? In favor? Opposed? Granted on 21. Item 22 has an ordinance. On item 22. Discussion on 22. In favor? Opposed? Granted on 22. 23 is an ordinance. Councilmember Travis? Councilmember Travis on item 23. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to bring up the, at this point, since we're going to be voting on the uh, budget for the uptown tiers, um, I always have a saying that I, I hate tierses and I love tierses. In fact, if I could, and for various reasons and different reasons, but if I could tiers my entire district, I would. And, <laughs> and the reason is this tiers alone. It's a well-managed, uh, it's very successful, um, there's a lot that's going on out there. I mean, I, when I came to town years ago, I mean, years ago, we used to call that the Galleria. Now it's called Uptown. It's fancy. You know, we used to always say that uh, Post Oak was our Rodeo Drive. 
Well, now Rodeo Drive is claiming themselves to be our post oak. Um, we've got Tillman Fertitta on the north side with his gorgeous, wonderful hotel. We've got Bob and Air building another five-star hotel on the south side. And uh, I see nothing but good things ahead for it. Uh, the infrastructure improvements that are being done out there and being done very well, by the way, uh, are, are much needed. Uh, I'm seeing it take shape. It should all be done by uh, December of this year. Um, so I'll welcome everybody over here uh, again to, to see what it's like once they get it all completed. The trees are going up. Uh, the buses won't be running down the middle lane for about another year. But I, I will say this is I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the bus lane in the middle. That's the thing I do not like. But everything else I do like. It's, it's really taking shape. And there's a lot of things that are going to be being done out there. If you come out, you'll see cranes everywhere. They're building, which is incredible for this reason alone. Right now, the Uptown District, which is the Galleria, actually has more square footage when it comes to commercial, retail, and residential than downtown. It essentially is our downtown. That's got more square footage. And with everything else being built, it will be even bigger soon. Uh, so what's going on out there is incredible, but what's good about that is that it brings in more property tax revenue and it brings in more sales tax revenue. And uh, what's good for the Galleria or Uptown is good for the rest of the city because it allows us to do the programs that we want to do. It is well managed. I don't have any problem with those tiers. Um, and I'm happy to vote for this. Uh, it's just it's one of those success stories that when you point to success, this is one to be pointed to. Thank you. All right, Council Member Starter. Mayor, I have a question for you. Um, so the bus that's running down the middle of Post Oak, the connection is still going to be made to the Northwest Transit Station? Um, what? Is it still that is my understanding. Yes. So, so I'm asking this question, so I'm sort of just highlighting. So you're saying that it's not going to stop development in the Galleria area in District G to be connected to District A? Just, just saying. Thank you. Any, any other discussion on item 23? Discussion in favor, opposed, granted on 23. 24 is an ordinance. On item 24, discussion on 24. In favor, opposed, granted on 24. 34 is an ordinance. Uh, Council Member Evans on, 30, on 34. Mayor, I had some open questions on the uh, detention relating to this particular one, and so I've ta I'm going to tag it, and, and the administration is aware of the open question. Okay. Item 34 has been tagged by Council Member. 36 <coughs> is an ordinance. On item 36. Item 36. In favor? Opposed? Granted on 36. 37 is an ordinance. On 37. Discussion on 37. In favor? Opposed? Right. Now we're going to go to number 20. Oh, Councilmember Stardust? Yeah. Huh? Oh, got it. Okay. Under matters held, item 38. Councilmember Stardust. Councilmember Stardust. Councilmember on 38. Thank you, Mayor. And, and this goes to my colleague's point again. I did um, ask, is, uh, you know, for. For my support, I ask that the uh, developer or the uh, MUD district uh, representatives reach out to the school district, to KDISD, because it will have a location directly across from the annexation. And I wanted to make sure that they had, they were aware and that they understood the, uh, the development. And I did receive a letter um, from their general counsel, Justin Graham, that just to summarize that based on the information known at this time, the district has no objection to this annexation. So I did my due diligence and, well, asked them to do theirs, and they brought it forward. So once again, I appreciate that. And then, again, if this is something that they're doing already or they've already made this in the, the, the outreach, I think it, you know, it doesn't hurt for them to go ahead and bring the documentation at the time. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion on item 38? In favor? Opposed? Granted on 38. Now we're going to turn to item 20. Okay, previously listed as item 20. It had not been received. It has now been received, and it is an ordinance. <clears throat> Councilmember Lester on item 20. Mayor, I just want to simply say uh, thank you to uh, New Hope Housing and Joy Horror at Brown for the good work that they continue to do. Look forward to uh, seeing this project on the ground, helping the people in the district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Barkins. Thank you, Mayor. I, too, want to join the uh, chairman of the committee in saying to New Hope Joy, thank you so much for what you're doing, at least in my district, 
with regards to the homeless issues and uh, whatever I can do to help, I'm with you. Any other discussion on item 20? In favor? Opposed? Granted on item 20. That completes the agenda. Our Council Member Mrs. Neris, uh, you're up first. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yesterday, there was a very important uh, uh, city council committee meeting. It was the housing committee um, where um, uh, Tom McCaslin, the director of the housing department, um, presented um, the, you know, how um, the, the uh, you know, with, as we start to get significant federal monies that are coming in, he talked about uh, the home, the, the Harvey Homeowners Assistance Program, and um, the guidelines are now posted on um, the the Housing Department website for review for a 30-day <laughs> public comment period. Um, it's a, uh, about a 32-page document that that I would encourage you know um, people that that you know will be. Trying to take advantage of this to, to look at it to see you know if if, um, if we're blind to an issue if there's something omitted if there's if something you know that um, based on your your own knowledge about your your situation or your neighborhood please um, uh, weigh in and, and help us guide this because if this will be um, uh, a, the document that 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 will be used to um, to move forward um, that this program is is it's really good news I think it's um, uh, it's designed to preserve and expand housing stock damaged by Hurricane Harvey to create sanitary, safe, energy efficient housing through the following means. Now, a lot of things are there are already a lot of programs. One of the the, the things that that's good about this one is it it, um, it pulls a lot of things together. So there will be reimbursement um, opportunities for for completed repairs. There will be um, uh, money that will be available for city managed rehabilitation and construction, reconstruction. There's also um, funding for homeowner managed rehabilitation. There will be funding for acquisition of damaged homes and there will be um, funding for interim mortgage assistance. So if you're paying a mortgage and you're also paying rent, there's opportunities to to access some you know, some some money, um, the, the the whole program is designed that um, it will it is intended to serve the people that that have had the least help or, or access to help. You know, will be the, the um uh, will be the at the top of the list. Um, so that, at, that eighty percent of the funding will be going to those with um, at 80 percent medium income or below um, though there are opportunities for for you know, for um, I think uh, up to 200 percent of the the um, area medium income um, getting half of uh, unmet need if, if they are are not within a floodplain there's a there's a lot of different um, information in in, um, in those guidelines but there it's quite important and um, it's, you know it, and it's it's already been a you know coming up a year and a half on you know since Harvey and and um, mayor when you were <coughs> ramping up extra um, people to you know, facilitate the permitting process we are probably going to need to ramp up you know the, the people that will be processing all of these you know the, um, the, the those that are, are seeking these reimbursements um, because there's there's so many of them and I and I asked what can people be doing now to be getting ready is there anything that can help and they pointed me to um, a, a, a sheet that's on on the housing department website and it's called the homeowner reimbursement program tip sheet and basically it it it, it has some really good um, ideas about uh, you know just making sure that you are ready so when the application process actually begins that um, that you're not then just starting to to do these things but it but it, it lists things that, you know about you know clearing up ownership issues um, verifying income you know having all of the, that kind of information in place but again it's called the homeowner reimbursement program tip sheet it's on their the housing department uh, website and it's both in English and in Spanish so um so please help share that information um, I would also just like to mention a couple things um, this weekend on Saturday October 20th the East End Festival will be on Navigation Boulevard and on Second Ward starting at noon until 10 p.m. it's going to be a you know a fun time out there also in East Tex Jensen Saturday, uh, Saturday Saturday October 20th 
There'll be lots of uh, good, good food, good entertainment, good music, you know, good people. Um, East Tex Jensen is having their annual Jensen Jubilee. That parade will begin at uh, 10 a.m. and uh, will be immediately followed by their fall festival. And um, I want to just have a big shout out for Booker T. Washington High School. Um, their gala celebrating their 125th anniversary is this, is this, um, this Saturday night as well. There have been a, a series of events all fall and, um, you know, ce celebrating that, that um, it's really significant date, 125 years, and, um, and, and the opening of a brand new school for them. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just wanted to point out to colleagues that we have a specially called TTI committee meeting this afternoon at 2.30. Uh, please join us. The uh, topic today is the update on the Northeast Water Purification Plant expansion and review of the early work package number six. Hope you'll attend. This past weekend was a uh, pretty busy time, Mayor. We um, went to two uh, galas, at least from my office, on Friday night. We honored the Art League Houston at Hotel Zaza and uh, I was especially moved with the Lifetime Achievement Award of my dear friend, the sculptor and professor from Rice, uh, George Smith, who was one of my mentors. Uh, great time with his family there. Saturday morning woke up and joined, among others, Melanie Lawson uh, for the 90th anniversary of Poe Elementary School. Uh, she gave an absolutely stirring address to the parents, the PTO, and the students that were gathered there. It was a beautiful morning. And uh, hats off to Melanie for uh, her great leadership as an alum of Poe. And then finally, Mayor, the uh, Consular Ball on Saturday night. You really were uh, on, a, on, on a roll there with all the honorary Consul Generals and the Thank dignitaries you. from around. I know uh, Council Member Stardig and Council Member uh, Christie were both there. It was fun to join my two colleagues uh, with all the dignitaries. Um, and hats off to Andy Ickin and his team. And I guess we're uh, plowing our way through these town hall meetings, Mayor, tonight. Thank Looking you. forward to joining Martha Castex Tatum in uh, District K for her meeting and tomorrow night with Greg Travis. Um, we've got to get the message out about Prop A and Prop B. Mayor, I'm trying to remember, Prop A is, is, Prop a is, good. is good and Prop B is B bad. B is bad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Borkins. Thank you, Mayor. Let me uh, first start off by uh, Echoing something you mentioned, Mayor, about the disrespect of your staff. I have had the opportunity to work with your team for a little bit over two years, and I can't tell you the respect I have for them because of their professionalism, and I really and truly enjoy working with all of them but William Paul Thomas. The rest of them are above board, man. I'm just trying to share light on it. But you, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you, have the, you have a great working team, and I, I respect them all. Okay. Um, Listen, you guys, some exciting news. We are very close. Let me just say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have worked to help address food deserts in District D over the years. Now we're at a point where we're about to, uh, we're moving closer to the uh, groundbreaking next year in 2019. But before we do that, I want to commend HEB for what they're trying to do with the new store that will be built in the district. Uh, they will be having on uh, HEB construction outreach uh, meeting on uh, October the 18th at the uh, uh, Buffalo Soldier Museum from 9.30 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. What they're doing are looking for individuals with these, uh, with, with, well, go to the website and take a look because it's a long list, but individuals who are in the construction business to be able to participate in building the store. I give HUB a lot of credit for that. A lot of companies tend to not want to do that, and they bring in their own team. But uh, Alicia Green Ellis, who represents them, uh, presented this and put it together. It was just an idea I had, and she jumped on it, and I can't commend her for brokering that between HEB and our community. So thank you so much, and I encourage you all to come on out and go to the website, and that's HEB um, uh, Opportunities for uh, Contractors in the Community. Last week uh, was a, the completion of a final two-weekend uh, where we had what we call District D Day of Cleaning. It was very successful. Uh, we assessed the community needs uh, surrounding the Crestmont area, Cloverland, Sunnyside, Margaret Jenkins Park area, Sagemont area, Massapation, George T. Nelson, and many others. And what we were doing is assessing uh, high weeds, vacant, four high weeds, vacant lots, illegal dumping, uh, light poles that were out, 
where the Bubs were out, where Centerpoint would come in and address those stray dogs, missing signage, uh, street condition, uh, ditch condition, condition, ditch condition, if grading of the ditches needed to be done so the water flow wouldn't back up in neighborhoods. And I just can't thank everyone enough for participating. I want to thank Ms. Coffey and Solid Waste. I want to thank Centerpoint Energy for sending over almost 100 volunteers to come out, uh, and many, many others. Uh, but in particular, I would like to thank Ms. Betsy Small with Foster Place Civic Club, Mr. Preston Rowe with La Salette, Juanita uh, Mitchell with South Union, Kay Barber with Sage Mont, Tracy Stevens again with Sunnyside, uh, and just many, Monica Shaw, uh, Ms. Madison, uh, Reverend Nash for bringing the barbecue pit out to be a part, uh, Reverend um, um, Ro Pastor Rose for bringing the barbecue pit out to one of the other locations. Uh, we're all in this thing together to make our district even better and cleaner, and I look forward to helping. I uh, thank you for looking forward to future cleanups and assessments of needs in our community as we move District D forward. Again, I would like to congratulate the women of Alpha Kappa Omega for 90 years of services to all mankind, especially those that were here at the city of Houston yesterday. I also would like to thank Ms. George Jacquet as she served as chair of this year's anniversary celebration. I also would like to again thank Ms. Dorothy Booker as she continues to set the standard for volunteerism in the community uh, through her service uh, to our District D Senior Minor Home P Repair Program. So thank you again, Ms. Booker. The Pink and Green Golf Tournament. It was a pleasure to support Councilmember Martha Castex Tatum and the Mu Kappa Omega Charter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority last week for their Pink and Green Golf Tournament. It's one of the go-to golf tournaments mayor in the city of Houston. Uh, Councilmember Castex Tatum need to desperately take some golf lessons, and I will probably help pay for the first lesson for. Her. Um, it benefited the Julia F. Thompson Ivy, I mean, Education Scholarship Nonprofit uh, Fund. This is always a fun event, and again, great success, and congratulations, <laughs> Councilmember Castex Tatum. Jack Yates, <coughs> excuse me, Jack Yates Senior High School, which is located in District D, had the grand opening <coughs> of his library rededication. On yesterday, I uh, want to congratulate him on it. I uh, want to thank, it. as most of you guys know, Jack Yates uh, made his mark in history, has been a staple in the Third Ward community for many years. I would also like to thank the Interim Superintendent, Granita Latham, Trustee Jolanda Jones, and Tiffany Guillory, who is the principal, uh, for inviting me to come and participate. We must continue to invest uh, in the best for our students uh, as we continue to support them throughout the community. Thank you. Let's go Astros. Uh, Councilmember Christie. <coughs> Councilmember Christie. Thank you. I always like to extol the virtues of our city employees, so I'm going to cover um, uh, protocol office, uh, public works, and uh, police. Probably six months ago, I mentioned sometimes I pull a policeman over and they don't know who I am, but I ask them to cover a, a person going crazy on the street or trash. Uh, so I asked a police officer to go over to the soccer fields because there were piles of trash and people just threw it on the, the ground and, and um, I knew that I couldn't, I picked up some trash, but it wasn't making an impact. So he went over there and just talked to him that, hey, if you want to continue working on these fields, um, I've gone by there about six times since, and it's spotless. So whatever he said to them, and uh, the soccer players, you got to give them credit. They're using the trash can. So uh, thanks to the officer that did that. Public Works, uh, again, without telling them who I was, I, I said, we got a good taxpayer. I'm sure, I guess they finally found out who I was, but uh, I said, we got a big taxpayer that, uh, that you just told that the re-permitting would be another 25 days. Well, they had tremendous deadlines to meet, and I just called and left that note if you can help them out. They had it done within four days. The people are on project. The taxpayer is happy, and that's important. And the two people that helped out, uh, Gary, just tell them that uh, Al Raymond and uh, Mark uh, Sebasta uh, made a very good taxpayer happy and business uh, friendly is is still um, prevalent in that department. Councilor Ball, um, you need to meet Chris Olson. He's our new protocol person there. He's got a resume better than ours put together, a real patriot, and understands the world. 
but Deanna LaFleur, yeah, she, um, she's the, um, the one that makes it work. Introducing all those countries and pronouncing the names properly is amazing. And she's done it two years in a row, and she is just a class act, knows about five languages, and uh, she's great. But in that, uh, uh, they worked almost all night long to make that place uh, first class, consular ball. Uh, Mike Lugman. Um, uh, Nikki, I'm sorry. Nikki. Yeah. Okay, I got the name. Nikki knows. <laughs> Nikki knows I like her. Uh, Mazda Kulis, Stephen Elias, and my favorite, Jessica No. So they did a great job. Chevron, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Houston first, thank you. It was a class affair. And, and relationships like that probably could keep the world at peace if diplomatic relations continued and not uh, leaders of the country yelling at each other. So uh, it was a class affair and good relationships with all the countries that are here in uh, Houston, Texas. Thank you. House Member Laster. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem Cohen. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to remind everyone that this Saturday evening the Garden Oak Civic Club will host the 10th annual Garden Oak Wine Walk. And what's really important about this is that it supports the Neighborhood Constable Program. It's a terrific program. I would urge a lot of districts to look at something like this. Um, there are 12 tables of wine, food, and beer options, and uh, it's being held in the backyard of Ed and Brenda de Alba, who have done this for many years. And for more information to purchase tickets, please contact GardenOaks.org. It's Saturday from 4 until Octo uh, Saturday, beginning at 4 p.m., October 20th. The October meeting of the Co Council Committee on Quality of Life has been canceled. Please remove the hold on October 24th from your calendars. However, during our November 28th meeting, we will discuss a draft ordinance that we've been working on with the Astros for a proposal to limit the use of smokeless tobacco by professional baseball players at their stadiums something that's being done in at least 15 other stadiums around the country. Um, the discussion will take place Wednesday at our meeting, November 28th at 2 p.m. And finally, next Saturday, October 27th, the Friends of Oak Forest Park will host the Festival of Abilities, a family-friendly and inclusive festival benefiting the implementation of a playground for all abilities in Oak Forest Park. Mayor Turner will kick it off with remarks and I will join him at 4 p.m. The event will include a petting zoo and trick-or-treating and a pumpkin patch and a costume contest. Uh, the fun starts at 3 p.m. Mayor Turner's remarks will be at 4 at Oak Forest Park, uh, 2100 Judaway Street. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilmember Martha Kasek Tatum. Thank you, Mayor. On behalf of our combined municipal campaign chair, Vice Mayor Pro Tem Jerry Davis, want to remind everyone about the basketball games that will take place on Friday at Fondy Recreation Center. Uh, the games will kick off at 4.30 p.m. There'll be one at 4.30, 5.15. The Hot Wheels versus the city starts at 6. And the Mayor's Office versus City Council starts at 7. The tickets are $5. Uh, we hope to see everyone at Fondy Recreation Center to uh, support our combined municipal campaign. Uh, a couple of announcements for District K. Tonight, of course, uh, is our town hall meeting at the Fountain Life Center at 6.30 p.m. This is a great opportunity for our citizens to come and have their questions answered and learn more about Proposition A and B before they go to the polls. Um, tomorrow at 10 a.m., we will be at Townwood Park for the Memorial Tree Dedication in honor of Donald Perkins. They've already planted the live oak and we'll have a unveiling of the, um, the memorial marker that will be at the tree at Townwood Park. So we hope to see all of uh, the residents in District K and everyone who love Donald at Townwood Park if you're available tomorrow at 10. On tomorrow, we will also have our Brazewood Super Neighborhood Council meeting, uh, and that will be held at Linkwood Park Community Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. We encourage all of the residents of, uh, that participate with the Super Neighborhood Council to be there. 
The South Houston Concerned Citizens Coalition will also be meeting on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. That meeting will take place at the Hiram Clark Multiservice Center on Fuquay, <laughs> and we look forward to seeing those residents there on tomorrow night at 7. On Friday the 19th, this will be our last Fort Bend Bridging the Divide meeting for 2018. So we're asking all of our stakeholders in Fort Bend who come out and meet with us on a monthly basis to be there. We've got a couple of great announcements um, and looking forward to seeing all of those stakeholders at the Briargate Clubhouse at 9.30 a.m. on Friday. Those are our announcements for the week. All right, Council Member Starling. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I had the opportunity to be on the Chris X show on 700 AM at KSEV. Um, I want to thank them for having me. I, we talked about the uh, Prop A, Prop B. I, I uh, re, re, reiterate the message that you and I uh, spoke about at the uh, town hall meeting that we had about um, that w this is not a process that we, w we support going forward. That. Um, we need to make sure that the negotiations are, you know, are solid going forward. Um, that it's bad public policy for Prop B. We want to make sure that we understand um, the consequences. So I want to thank again Chris X for having me on th their show. And then um, I want to thank everyone that came out to our debates. And Mayor, thank you for being there. I think you had a great opportunity to speak to. The f I assume that we probably had five. I think we had a solid 500 people. We're, we're already anticipating moving the location to uh, the larger hall of, up on the Thank our sponsors, Comcast, Raytech, Spring Branch Management District, the Houston Professional Firefighters Association, City of Houston Special 90. Everyone contributed to this uh, District A Town Hall um, community barbecue. It was very well attended. I think there were some really good questions to you, Mayor, um, that you, I think, um, I think you even stayed afterwards and answered a number of questions. Right for the public. So uh, to these issues and we need to make sure and formulate your opinions based on the facts and things that you know and um, the selection. Uh, the other thing I did have the uh, opportunity to attend with Councilmember Robinson all I think uh, Mayor the, your team and uh, special events was it special events and uh, our team in Houston first in Houston first. A oh, beautiful event and, and I, I hope that our my colleagues uh, here um, hosting a table is, that I, um, I I think is an opportunity for all of us and we also had New Zealand at our table people and I think they're you know uh, Philip request is probably gonna have, so we're forming friendships he said that he uh, goes to church with you Councilmember Robinson so those type of relationships and networking are a great opportunity for all of us and much appreciated and then I also last Monday attended the pre-election analysis luncheon uh, the Clifford group um, panelists were Dr. Bob Giles and moderator was Maya Shea. I think, uh, I think everyone was doing their best guess, <laughs> um, but it was very well attended and much appreciated. And then yesterday, of course, the 2018 Houston Parks Board <laughs> annual luncheon. Uh, Mayor, I had, I was sitting with Mr. Aaron of Aaron Lede Park. You know where that is. Yes. Yes. And in, in near your home. And, um, I told him that we're looking forward to improvements in the park and keeping that park uh, a great that we have a lot of focus on the DeSoto area, Antoine. So we really his uh, contribution and donation of that land for that park. But once again, the Houston Party. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Gallegos. Thank you, Mayor. My following comments are to put out to the public last week, ISD board meeting, to speak on two matters that were on the board agenda that pertain to my council district. I testified before the board on agenda item B4, which related to the reappointment of the HID, HISD representative to the Gulf Gate Turs, and B1, the three HISD appointees to the land bank board. Both items have been delayed due to board gridlock. Coincidentally, farther down on the same agenda was the item relating to the interim superintendent. I did not speak on that item, nor did I have any knowledge of that action that would be taken when that item was discussed later that night. In my prepared remarks, I spoke to current HISD appointee to the TERS in my district and urged the board to move on his reappointment. I also encouraged the trustees to appoint qualified individuals 
from divergences to the land bank board. I informed them of the disparity that has existed on that third for was only one Hispanic member. But that is, I've publicly pushed for that on commission. Should I are quiet about it. I have consistently vocalized the need for minority representation, especially quality female representation. And many others on this council who share similar concerns about minority underrepresentation. Unfortunately, several HISD trustees Thursday night did it in two separate TV interviews that I attended the board meeting with an meeting with an ulterior motive. She suggested that my comments were targeted at the current interim superintendent. Dr. Latham, because, quote, she's a black female. Went on to say, quote, the council member came here tonight and said since the district is 62 percent Hispanic, we need to have more Hispa Hispanic leaders. Comments aired at news stations. Trustee Adams took my testimony from earlier in the night, her case about an, an or Dr. Latham. Her assertion is simple, and I regret that Trustee Wanda Adams misused my words for a political soundbite. While I hate to raise this matter at this chamber, it's important that I publicly address and correct the comments she made. The school board is independently elected in an elected body with its own authority, rules, policies, and procedures and I have no interest in interfering in their business. But as a duly elected official, I have a responsibility to my constituents to always advocate for what is in my council district's best interest. And that's why I was present last week to encourage the trustees to act on the TERS and the land bank appointments and to ensure that a diverse slate of candidates is considered for those pending appointments. Too much time and energy has been spent on the interim superintendent position. The HISD should refocus its attention on what matters, finding the most qualified person to lead our children in a positive direction. I'm glad they took the first step Monday afternoon by apologizing to the entire community for their actions recommitting to the search process for a permanent superintendent and setting a date for the completion of the formal search. Thank you. Uh, council Member Kubash. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like the council members to know that about six blocks from here uh, at Henderson and Kane is a general store and uh, it's been there for, I would say, uh, as long as I can remember, it, it, was, uh, it had been there at least 40, 50 years. They reopened it, Mayor, and there's a um, they they provide uh, a, a great little menu of for people. And Monze uh, Lozano is a general manager, and and they make uh, barbecue so, so, so good that you can eat it with a spoon. I mean, it's just delicious. So I, I wanted to give them a shout out. And when you walk into the little store, it, it made me feel like I stepped back into the fifties. And you just feel that that atmosphere, the the way it's set up. Uh, they have an old timey cash register there, and if if you want to just uh, pick up some stuff for your office, it's only just about six blocks from uh, from where we are right now. And you'll just love going there, and the people are so friendly. And uh, I just had to, to. I told them I was going to do a stay of council and do a shout out, which I normally don't do, but I wanted to give them a shout out. Henderson and Kane General Store. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Edwards. Thank you. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, those that were involved in the planning, the special events office um, of the mayor's office for AK Day at the Capitol celebrating 90 years of service for Alpha Kappa Omega. I want to thank uh, Council Member Castex Tatum for her uh, uh, support of the activities, as well as Council Member Boykins also for his support of the activities uh, that were held here today and for all the warm wishes uh, that were extended as well. So I appreciate that. 
Um, also want to uh, highlight some activity that our Be The Solution Task Force um, has engaged in, which was uh, relating to youth empowerment. It took place last week, and we're trying to assist, or the group is trying to assist uh, those high school students who might be dealing with uh, difficult or challenging issues relating to a wide variety of things, such as race, um, among others, and so dealing with various tensions that are faced in high school in a manner to help and equip them with the skill sets necessary so that they can be the solution in those contexts. So I want to celebrate them as well. And finally, on uh, October 25th, we will be having our Empowered You Houston Senior Citizens Conference at the Kingdom Builder Center um, in District K. And um, I'm very excited that we are oversubscribed uh, with seniors. And so we're very, very excited that an event will be held uh, from 10 to 3.30 p.m. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.
people that take that uh, metro rail on the park thing. Okay, let's get it going. I can do for you. Mr. Mayor, um, yes. <clears throat> I know that you can't get into specifics of your most recent cybersecurity stress test, but if yeah. you could offer um, at sort of a, a high level what the city is doing to prepare for those sort of attacks, and, and more specifically, how do you not become the next Atlanta? Okay. We certainly have. Um, we're taking every steps uh, that we can within our financial means to upgrade our systems. We've coordinated uh, various security exercises with federal agencies and departments. Um, if you can recall, a month or two ago, we did the exercise, the Jaguar tech exercise. We've, we've, done, we've done that. Um, people with NIT have gone to various um, security sort of briefings outside of the, outside of the state of Texas. Uh, we've taken a look at what uh, other cities have done or what they have failed to do or the problems that they have encountered and how we can move to address that. We're certainly working with various partners like Microsoft and others uh, to strengthen our, our uh, um, systems, to protect our systems. Um, so we're working on, on, multiple, on multiple levels. Um, but we are very sensitive to what took place in Atlanta and some of the other cities. And I will tell you, um, uh, our systems are more advanced. And I, I think we are, we're more prepared probably than most cities. You, f you feel good about the. I feel good, but you know we have to. Uh, you know, as I think it was Secretary Rice who said, you know, um, you know, people can only have to be. I think they can be successful one time. We have to be successful every time to prevent. And so uh, I feel good about it, uh, but we have to be successful every time to uh, to prevent threats, uh, serious threats to our to our system. Mayor, question yes. about the uh, sure. Kirby. The, the uh, fire union has said, and Marty said this during your debate, that the, the city tried to declare the union's collective bargaining rights unconstitutional in the district court case. You said during the debate that's not true. I'm wondering if you can expand on yeah, what, the, your, what the city's argument is. Well, what the union has failed to say to the general public is that they're seeking two bites at the apple to get these pay raises. Uh, they have filed a lawsuit against the city uh, asking the judge to grant pay raises. That lawsuit is still pending, so I would invite you to take a look at that lawsuit. That was filed by the union against the city, and and the second bite is to try to get pay raises, significant pay raises, through the referendum. So they've taken two bites. The, the city of Houston has not sued uh, the union. We have been defending ourselves against the lawsuit filed by the union against the city of Houston, seeking uh, the same sort of pay raises that they're seeking through their referendum. So they just haven't been up front and letting the voters know, even in voting against Proposition B, and I hope that people will take a look at it because Proposition B is not good public policy. It does provide in the first year pay rates of 29 percent, cost the city over $100 million a year. The Comptroller said it's not sustainable. Great Houston Partnership is against it. Um, and quite frankly, it will impact the city in, in, in enormous ways. Um, so that's... That would be my response. We haven't filed a suit against them. The, the, the fire association, the, the union, has filed a suit against the city seeking these pay raises. So please ask them what happens if, let's say, voters say no to Proposition B. Are they still going to try to subvert the will of the people by advancing their lawsuit? Mayor, uh, sure. the uh, the New York Times is currently reporting that uh, when 
the Saudi Crown Prince was in Houston earlier this year. One of the individuals who accompanied him is one of the same individuals that uh, Turkey is now alleging to be among the people uh, who, who killed uh, journalist Jamal Khashoggi. And I was just hoping to your reaction, particularly given that they illustrated this with the picture that, that you were featured in. That is so far out of my bailiwick. I, I don't have any information uh, to speak to that. Um, I will tell you, I am so focused that when I saw that picture, the only thing I saw in the background was Proposition A saying good, Proposition B saying bad. That's the only thing I can gather from it. But that's, I don't have anything to say. I, I don't know anything on that. Going back to that issue, um, the oh, proposition A and B. Yes, uh, A is good and B is bad. That'd be a, that would be good as a, as a front page headline. We'll, we'll work on that. So, uh, is that a commitment? No. <laughs> you got to try. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. No, no, no. So Marty, Marty is also saying that the nine and a half percent that you said is on the table was never officially offered during collective bargaining. I guess the. Chief has said it was offered during mediation. Can you clarify your understanding of, of 9.5% has been offered going back, I would say, towards the end of last year to, through the beginning of this year. 9.5% is still on the table. Voters vote against Proposition B. 9.5% is still on the table. Okay? I can't, I can't get any simpler than that. Um, but, you know, um, has Marty Latham ever presented you all with a cost analysis of, of their proper of their referendum working working on that right now well but Checking people will start voting next week right this is this is their referendum when when are they going to provide you all with their own analysis of their referendum certainly i i, I would think that uh um if i'm asking you if i'm asking the general public to uh, to vote for something that has cost implications i would have gone through the math you just can't be, just say, you know, my math is not correct. Uh, and it's your, it's your proposition. Uh, so I think what, what, what Marty Latham and that group needs to do is provide their cost analysis of their represent, represent, representative. A failure to do that ought to be a disqualifier first, first and foremost. What I will say to you, the Comptroller said that what they're proposing is unsustainable. What we are saying to you that it's a 29% pay raise cost in the city of $100 million a year. The Greater Houston Partnership is against it. They are the business chamber. Um, so there are a number of entities that are against this referendum. It's not good for the city. It's not good public policy. Um, it will put us under uh, financial distress. It will cause significant reductions. It's not even good for firefighters. And quite frankly, what Marty Latham ought to be saying is that he's putting the younger firefighters, those that are 10 years or less, he's putting their jobs on the line, okay? He's willing to sacrifice the jobs of firefighters who may be 10 years or less at the fire department. And, and um, so he has to explain that to them. Quite frankly, I, I think people would rather have a contract, okay, than face being laid off. But again, that's something he has to explain. The reality is, and he's not ever taken the 9.5% to his members to vote on. Ask him whether or not the membership has rejected the 9.5%. Because as far as I know, the, the rank and file firefighters have never said no. And I distinguish between the leadership at the top of the union and the roughly 3,900 firefighters down below. So the 9.5 has been offered, the 9.5 remains on the table, and if the voters say no, and I hope they will to 9.5, I mean to the Proposition B, the 9.5 will still be on the table. Fair question regarding the, the hiring freeze that's, that's in place pending the vote on Proposition yeah. B. How, given the hiring freeze, how is the city paying for the, the temporary workers for public works to work through the, the backlog of, of permitting that you mentioned earlier? Oh, we have an existing temporary uh, contract. That's, in, that's already in place. Okay. So yeah. the, the concerns about having to, to cut spending if... Plus, when you when yeah. temporary uh, employees, I mean, they're, they're temporary. Right. I mean, they're going to they're gonna phase out. They don't carry the same benefits as a permanent employee. So you can ramp up and ramp down with, with tips.
Is that something that would be affected, though, if, I mean, if, if the city has to, to cut spending if Proposition B oh, passes? Everything in, uh, is going to be impacted. For example, if Proposition B should pass, barring any court action, um, we, simply can't, we simply can't afford Proposition B. I mean, we can't. We can't afford $100 million added to your bottom line in, 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 a, in, every, in a, every year it's recurring. We can't, we can't afford that. So that's why we've said repeatedly, you know, Proposition A, which is a dedicated fund, it's not increasing anybody's fees or taxes, it's just dedicating it for draining streets and flooding, that's a good deal. The Proposition B, we can't afford to give any employee group a 29% pay raise. Well, it, I mean, any sense as to how much of that backlog you could then work through in the remaining time for the election? Well, I mean, that's the other, but people also have to bear in mind is that you have Proposition B that's going to increase $100 million to our bottom line, a year, we a little over a year after after Harvey, people are still repairing and and uh, repairing their homes. There are people who still need uh, home assistance, and there's people who are still needing the permitting office. Okay, if a uh, proposition B passes, permitting is going to be affected. Everything is going to be affected. Public safety is going to be affected. So um, we keep trying to point out the dire consequences that exist. I know, in, you know. What I'm hearing is that some people just don't believe that that's going to take place. Well, I can only warn you. But what I do know, if that Proposition B passes, barring any court action, the earliest that it can be repealed by the voters would be November of 2021. So well, think about that. Is your understanding on that, too, if, sort of getting deep into hypotheticals, but if Prop B passes, and there's some sort of court action taken, there it's sued for, for vague or ambiguous language. Does it still go into effect, or does the court have to stop it? The court will have to stop it. Do you, do you see that, foresee that happening? There's no all? guarantee of what a judge is going to do. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't read the tea leaves on that one. But, uh, I mean, you read Bill Houston went into effect, and it was implemented. It's now back on the ballot this year, okay? Uh, but the problem, but the, no one knows what a judge is going to do. Um, so, do we really want to run that, take that type of risk? Okay, I mean, that's why the uh, voting is important, however people choose to vote is important. It's important for us to give the information, that's why we have the town hall tonight in, uh, in uh, Council Member Martha Castec Tatum District at the Fountain Life Center at 6.30 tonight. That, this will be town hall meeting number 11, and then tomorrow night we will be in Council Member Travis District. Uh, in District G at 6.30. Both meetings will be at 6.30. So what we can do and what we are obligated to do is to provide the information to as many people as possible and, uh, and, and, and provide the information so people can make informed choices. And, and I think uh, once the people get the information, uh, based on the feedback that we have gotten from 10 town hall meetings, as well as a, num a number of other meetings that we have attended, uh, people understand that, uh, that A, dedicating the revenue for rebuild Houston for drainage streets and flooding is a good policy decision, and B, um, um, voting on employee management type decisions or granting any group a 29% pay raise costing the city $100 million is just not good policy. It's not, it's not good policy. Okay? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks sir. Thank that concludes the agenda session of the Houston City Council. Remember, you can see the City Council replay of the public session Thursday at 7 p.m. and the replay of the City Council agenda session on Friday at 7 p.m. The complete replay of the Houston City Council can be seen in its entirety on Saturday at 6 p.m. And regain independence. And so for me we spoke with Christine Ha, a celebrity chef and winner of season three of Master Chef. She lost her vision at the age of 20. Today, she serves on Help Advocate Awareness. Like Ira is on the up and up for people with vision impairment uh, because I think when you lose something like your vision, you feel like you're losing your independence, independent person. So to feel like I found to help me organize things, um, that was the goal than losing the. Come on, Steve! Oh, come on! Uh, 
Rebecca, I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up. Guess what's happening October 27th? We're having our annual 5K Fun Day Fun Day Walk. Is this the walk around McGregor Park where you and family would come out the inside trail? Just an opportunity for everybody to get together? Yes, get about fun. And guess what? Do 906-8686. Text Fun Day. It's $20. You can do it. Come on. All proceeds go to DDA. Perfect. Let's get out, get up, get active, and let's have it fun at the park. Hope to see you there. Just 50 miles from the Gulf of Mexico lies the biggest city in Texas, the fourth largest in the country. A city so vast it could hold six huge American cities within its borders. A city of big ideas, a global knowledge capital where problems are solved every day. A city that's alive with energy. Humans. Be in the country with one of the West. Houston is the third coast for life sciences. The Texas Medical Center leads in medical technology and is home to the number one cancer center in the world. The life science research that takes place here changes lives around the globe. Multinational, national, and local exploration. Houston has revolutionized the energy industry. And to the east of the central business complexes in the world. A complex that for innovation. The Houston workforce is unparalleled. It's one of the top cities graduates, universities and technical schools here. School and products. With the number one export port in the country and more than 109. But there's more to this great city. There are neighborhoods to suit every budget and every lifestyle. Plus 10,000 restaurants serving more than 70 local nationally diverse population translates to a multitude of fans for all sorts of sports. With its great mix of ideas, people, culture, and industries.
I'm so sorry. I thought well, I made him. It was a simple mistake. I know if I was going a bit slower. We are Latina Voices Smart Talk. Sofia Adroguea, Minerva Perez. What a show it has been for 10 years uh, here on a HTV. Decade. HTV. We got to give a lot of credit to HTV oh, for sorry. taping all of our shows. We've got more than 100. We've got 112 shows now okay. of uh, incredible interviews. We're talking Sonia Sosa, Father T.J. Martinez, Supreme Court justices, yeah, right, exactly, Olympic athletes, athletes. Yeah. and what people would think were everyday people mm -hmm. doing extraordinary things. There have been heroes, big and small. Absolutely, and taken seriously as a lawyer, I will do this if it's all about smart talk. Mm -hmm. And the, the trajectory of topics we've covered, human trafficking stories, with the purpose of giving it back and paying it forward, and we've, we've done, done it. That. Done but that. you were the genesis. How did this even come to fruition? Well, as you know, I was a newswoman for many, many anchor years. Woman. An anchor woman. Um, and uh, in Los Angeles, here in Houston, for many, many years. We've done a lot. You've written an amazing book. I'm ready for the next one. Could you actually? I'm working on it. Could you <laughs> stop helping, uh, uh, helping people and everything else and Hurricane Harvey and all this other that we're giving back? But um, you wrote about your trajectory and everything you accomplished and the stories that you captured and told? And the stories haven't stopped. Uh, I still have many stories that I forgot or have been reminded of, of through course. the years. And uh, Latina Voices obviously is going to be included because I created Latina Voices in, in the last, in the second book. Of, and uh, I, so. can't, I cannot wait to read it. And you know, it's funny, I did not get the luxury to do a book about stories, but I did it on business so litigation, legal. a treatise, 1500 page book, I'm not on my third edition. And so in this 10 years, We've done this. We've also raised children. Mm -hmm. You've got college. Yes. College age. College and age. Beyond. And, and beyond. beyond. Yes. And I've got everything from a college age to my youngest 13. Mm -hmm. But it's really been, I, I think we are most blessed because we are so honored when people stop us oh my and say, I watch you. Some say I get up just to make sure I watch you at 530. I'm like, Tebow it. Yeah. Watch, watch go to www.latinavoices.com. Yeah, yeah. But it really just know to all of you that that is what's inspiring for us. And our audience continues to grow. And our audience, it's it's not just about the Latinos. No. And we are not in Spanish, although we could. Um, it's for us. We made this for everyone. Everyone that wants to, as you said at the beginning, well, to be educated, to engage. I like to call Latina Voice of Smart Talk a show about universal topics yes. from a Latina perspective. It's a story, and you've got to, or Dr. Renew, it's the first, well, remember the first woman to ever be a judge in Harris yes. County? Yes. We've had an amazing... Oh. So... We'll start off with Prescott. I'm an administrative supervisor here at the Houston Health Department in the Bureau of HIV, STD. Our young lady was about 14, and of course, uh, she was infected with HIV. And she had to have to speak with the uh, young lady, of course, before we can discuss anything with the parents. We were able to get them separated, you know, in the, in the room with the young lady and the, uh, you know, like I say, it affects people in different ways. She just she grew up, and then on top of that, you know, just pictured or seen this young lady, 14 years old. So mom hears that, so mom comes banging on the door, you know, because of my baby, my baby. I uh, was able to calm the young lady down. Of course, then after that, we were able to engage the mother. Uh, for this work that we do in this, in this, in this area, how you have to time that we get a report it's about somebody you know, train my personnel to kind of with my own personal perspective on that you know, on the other side of this news that we're bringing or maybe your brother your sister consider myself a servant if you will so I'm, and, and that's what I'm hoping this whole thing within uh, all of those other networks but also with the people I work with every day that I'm able to serve them in the capacity that they want to, for me to help people out The concept of it is to um, test as many young people as we can. but we, the hip hop generation is who we were really trying to connect with. We initially started with one of the uh, local hip hop radios, the, the 
best way to stop prevention of HIV is to know your status. Right? If you don't know your status, uh, more than, uh, we did an event there, and boy, we were tight. I mean, it was elbow room, uh, low-level office building, we went room to room, and got pretty tight. We realized then that we probably needed to expand. When we had the NAACP site, I was over the safety portion, which meant I had to make sure all of the other up in the morning, going outside first, cranking up a generator, going open up every door for the store, fixing the minor problems before we get started. So we have to make sure before we open the doors in the morning that everything is ready to roll. And, and, and that, that, that helped me a lot too because it kept me moving, make sure all the problems are resolved before we open the doors. Because once we roll, man, that, that, that event rolls. It's like anybody else, I've had some, some up and down times, you know, in terms of, and, 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 and uh, personally, I've had some other health issues. You know, I'm uh, uh, cancer care you at the time, you know, how you have to go on the other side of the medical side, blessed because, you know, uh, and, and, I'm, and I contribute that to the way I try to kill more people than breast cancer and uh, prostate cancer and all that stuff combined. Uh, uh, I'm not ashamed to say my wife had breast cancer. She, uh, she died with cancer uh, August 2014. Still, I needed to, still felt like I had some people I needed to help. And the reason I'm still, that foundation helps me to stand in the midst of things that's going on in my life. I mean, I mean, I cried every day, you know, I cried every day. Still cry some days, you know, but uh, I need to do it. And when I was going through my treatments, when I first got diagnosed, but the clearance with the docs, well, through the treatments and uh, the surgeries and all that, it wouldn't let me do a whole lot, you know, which is, I, I knew why, but, you know, but I still would come in because, I mean, I know it's time and I know it's the right time because uh, I, I hope I've, Enough a legacy of provided of service and help people. That's good enough for me. Your own vision, and especially in the community. Coming up on this episode of The Folklorist. Right. It was a chilly April evening in Almondsbury, England, when a He thought the young lady was a vagabond, so he brought her to the home of the local magistrate, Samuel Worrell. He explained to him that the woman was acting rather odd. Mr. Worrell checked the woman's pockets for any documentation, but only found a counterfeit sixpence and quickly grew suspicious, as holding fake currency was a crime. But the woman seemed harmless to his wife, Mrs. Worrell, whose kind heart made her estate in Old Park. But the Worrells and their servants were startled by her indecent behavior, which clashed with their proper English manners. Without clothing, she refused to eat.